Kelly and Robert, along with sister Alyssa, Liliana, and brother Cameron. He plays wide receiver and defensive back and has led her for two seasons. He also wrestles and runs track. His future plan is to graduate, graduate and become a diesel mechanic. Our next senior is Miles Johnson. He's escorted by his mom, Leslie Mann, and dad, Earl Johnson. He has led it for baseball and football for four years. He is a part of the National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society. He was first team all region for football for two years, lineman of the year junior year, rookie of the year for baseball sophomore year, and first team all region baseball sophomore year. He was also an all state honor roll mission his sophomore year. Miles plans to continue his education while pursuing his dream of playing college football. Our next senior is Ethan Mann. He is escorted by his mother, Susie Mann. He plays offense and defensive line and is lettered for two seasons. He also wrestles and runs track. He is a member of FBLA and FFA. His future plan is to go to the University of North Georgia. Our next senior is Billy Mitchley. He is escorted by Lee Mitchley and Melissa Barnett. He plays defensive back. His future plan is to join the Army, become an electrician, and have a stable family. Our next senior is Will Mosley. Our next senior is Will Mosley. He is escorted by Janie, Curtis, Katie, and Jonah Henry. He plays fullback and outside linebacker and is lettered for three seasons. He also runs track. He is a member of the FFA and was first team all region in 2018. His future plan is to go to technical school to become a welder. Our next senior is Traylon Owensby. He is escorted by Kimberly and Shannon Owensby. He plays running back and is lettered for three seasons. He also runs track. He is a member of FCA and is a first team all region running back and offensive player of the year in 2018. His future plan is to become a lineman. Our next senior is Sarah Sosby. She is escorted by her mother Tracy and dad Mike, along with her sisters Hannah and Howie. She is the varsity kicker and is led her for three seasons. She also plays soccer and was the captain last season and is a registered soccer official. Sarah is a member of the National Honor Society and the National Technical Honor Society. She has earned state certification in exercise science and sports medicine. Sarah is a member of the Ridge Community Church and First Baptist Youth Group and has participated in several mission trips in the U.S. and Haiti. Her future plan is to go to Kennesaw State to pursue a doctorate in dermatology and use this platform to continue mission work. Our next senior is Jacob Tuggle. He is escorted by his dad David and mom Sandy Tuggle and sister Cal. He plays defensive end and has led her for four seasons. His future plan is to become an automotive mechanic welder of work, and a welder of work in the construction field. Our next senior is Jackson Weeks. He is escorted by his mom and dad, Julian Vernon, and sister Victoria. He plays linebacker and left guard and has played football for 10 years and has lettered for three seasons. 
Jackson is a member of the National Honor Society and the National Technical Honor Society. He was selected as a 2008 first team all region linebacker. His future plan is to follow God's plan for his life and to be the best at whatever he decides to do. Our next senior is Gabe Willis. He is escorted by Tara and Jeremy Farenbaugh and Chad Willis. He plays fullback and has played football for seven years. His future plan is to become an electrician. Our next group of seniors are part of the sports medicine program. The first senior is Claire Cobb. She is being escorted by Dorinda Cobb and Blythe Griggs. She is the head athletic training student and has lettered for two years. She also plays tennis and is a 2019 HOSA officer. She has won the Essential of Healthcare Award. Her future plan is to attend Chattahoochee Technical College and become a physical therapy assistant. Our next senior is Courtney Danielle Kendall. She is being escorted by Mom Pam, Dad Calvin, and Sister Kelsey. She has been an athletic trained student and lettered for two years. She also is a member of HOSA. Her future plan is to attend Dalton State and major in nursing and become a labor and delivery nurse, get married, and have a family of her own. Our next senior sports management student is Caden Rich. He's being escorted by Sandy and Henry Rich. He's been an athletic training student for one year. His future plan is to become a nurse practitioner or physician's assistant. Our band and color guard seniors are our next group to be recognized. First is James R. He's being escorted by Richard and Stacy R., Johnny and Carol Hayes, and Tabitha Prince. He has been in color guard four years and is the captain. His future plan is to attend Valdosta State University and receive a teaching degree in high school science or social studies. Our next senior is Emma Barnstead. She's being escorted by Scott and Julie Barnstead. She plays the French horn and has played in the band seven years. Emma is also in the National Honor Society, International Thespian Society, and been a part of mock trial for three years. She was selected for district all-state band and participated in Governor's Honor this past summer in music. Her future plan is to attend UGA to major in music education, which is truly an irreplaceable passion of hers. Next is Thomas John Bartoff. He's being escorted by his father, Thomas Lawrence Bartoff. He plays a trump and is he plays a trumpet and is lettered for four years. Thomas also plays tennis, is in the National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, and on the UCB Jeter Board Directors. He has received all district and all state awards as a trumpet player. His future plan is to attend the United States Air Force Academy to pursue a degree in engineering and physics and hope to lead others to change the world. Our next senior is Isaac Brooks. He is being escorted by mother Christy Greason, Chloe and Jace, and grandparents Kathy and Zeke Henson. 
Isaac plays the baritone saxophone and has led it for four years. He is also in the Spring Musical Orchestra and the Fannie County High School Jazz Band. His future plan is to, to attend KSU, UNG, or Dalton State and pursue a degree in film and communication. Our next senior is, is Harley Quinn Cox. She has been the flag court for four years. She is also in FCA and is a Reed scholar. Her future plan is to attend Georgia Southern and pursue a degree in therapy. Jane Fish. She is being escorted by her mom, dad, and family. She is a section leader and plays the clarinet. She has been in a band for seven years and also a member of the FBLA. She was selected for District Honor Band, Young Harris Honor Band, Jazz Band, and she won the Musicianship Award. Her future plan is to go to college and get a degree in music performance and start a family. Our next senior is Seth D.J. Foster. He's escorted by parents Gayla and David Foster and siblings. He plays the trumpet and has led her for four years. He is a member of FBLA, National Honor Society, and UCB Junior Board of Directors. His future plan is to attend Jacksonville State University, be a part of the Marching Southerners, Southerners and obtain a degree in finance. The next senior is Taylor Elaine Gibbs. She's being escorted by Jennifer and Russell Jones and Michael Cornelius. She plays a trumpet and trombone and is a section leader. She's been in the band for seven years. Taylor is in the jazz band and is also a member of TSA, the National Honor Society, Sources of Strength, and UCB Junior Board. Her future plan is to join the U.S. Army and pursue a career in air traffic control. Our next band senior is Ashley Jewel Guthrie. She is being escorted by her dad, David Guthrie, and her mom, Stacy Pinson. She plays the piccolo during marching season and the flute during concert season. Her future plan is to attend North Carolina State and specialize in veterinary medicine. Our next senior is Laura Catherine Watney. She's being escorted by Michael, Amanda, Jill, and Chuck Watney, along with Natalie Sanders. She has played the clarinet and is currently is the drum major. She is a member of the Ridge Student Ministry Praise Band, Mock Trial, UCB Junior Board of Directors, and Sources of Strength. She has received District Honor Band, Oboe, conducted the UGA Red Coat Band this fall with Roger Dance Young Conductors Award, received numerous first place and superior ratings at, comp at competitions. Laura was also voted most likely to succeed by her peers. Her future plan is to attend college or university and major in education, and she wants to hopefully inspire future generations like her teachers do for her. Our next senior is Brandy Harper. She is being escorted by Dana Harper, Jonathan Brittany Harper, and Henry Newton. She has played the flute and piccolo for seven years and led her for four years. She is a member of the National Honor Society and Future Farmers of America. Brandy received the 2018-2019 Basic Agriculture Award. Her future plan is to earn a degree in radiology and ultrasounds. She wants to find who God has made for her and raise a family here in Blue Ridge. Our next senior is Crystal Harper. She's being escorted by her parents, Wayne and Beverly Harper. She has played clarinet for seven years in the band. Bristol received the 2015 Most Improved for Band and the Musicianship Award for two years. Her future plan is to go to college, major in photography, and move on to create her own business after graduating college.
The next senior is Jake Helstrom. Jake is being escorted by parents Mike and Jenny Helstrom. He has played clarinet for six years. Jake is a member of the National Honor Society and is the reigning 2019 Fannin County High School homecoming king. His future plan is to attend North Georgia Technical College and earn a degree in computer science. Our next senior is Maddie Hyde. Maddie is being escorted by her mom, Kelly Hyde. She has played trumpet in the band for seven years and letter for four years. She has also been a member of the jazz band. Her future plans is to graduate high school, go to college, and pursue a career. The next senior is Sydney Alexandria Loudermill. She is being escorted by Alex, Lisa, and Lily Loudermill. Sydney has played trumpet for seven years and lettered for four years. She is a member of FBLA, Drama, and TSA. Her future plan is to go into biomedical engineering and help in the, com in the community. Our next senior is Savannah Magianis. She is being escorted by Crystal Walker and Marcus Boyles. Savannah has played the saxophone for four years and lettered for three years. Her future plan is to join the military. The next senior is Seth Mathis. He is being escorted by dad, David Mathis, stepmom, Andrea Mathis, and mom, Kristen Mathis. He has been a member of the drum line, involved in band for seven years, and lettered for four years. Seth's future plan is to attend North Georgia Technical College and earn a welding certificate or join the Army. Our next senior is Vanessa Shea Miller. She's being escorted by her mother, Alicia Miller, and her father, Chris Miller. She has played the flute and piccolo for seven years and lettered for four years. Her future plan is to attend North Georgia Technical College and earn an associate's degree in nursing and to follow God's plan. Our next senior is Zachary Ryan Nelson. He's being escorted by his parents, Angela Beavers and James Beavers. He has played the trombone for seven years and lettered for five years. Zach has also participated in basketball and cheerleading. He has also been a member of Thespians, National Arms Society, and the Mock Trial Team. Zach is a 2019-2020 Assistant Drum Major, 2019-2020 Thespian Community Events Coordinator, and the 2019-2020 National Honor Society Treasurer. His future plan is to attend college and major in either theater or music, graduate college, perform, and eventually make it to Broadway. The next senior is Dylan Douglas Newley. He is being escorted by his dad, Douglas Newley, and his mom, Tanya Walker. He has played percussion snare for seven years and lettered for four years. Dylan has also participated in track. He has been a member of Thespians. Dylan Special Recognition to First Place Percussion Award at Bank Competitions and Drum Captain for the Fannin County High School Drum Club. His future plans include going to Georgia State and majoring in music technology while continuing to play in the band. Apollo with Josh and Jamie Tilly. Our next senior is Stephen Sester. He's being escorted by his mom, Courtney Turner. He has been a member of the drum line or played tenders for seven years and lettered for four years. Stephen has also been a member of the National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, and TSA. He is the Fannin County High School TSA president and a member of the 2019 Fannin Youth Initiative. His future plan is to major in videography and film and work in the movie industry. The next... Next senior is Jamison Tilly and Josh Tilly. He's being they're being escorted. The, ne the next senior is Jamison Tilly. He is being escorted by his parents, Kim and Bill Tilly. He has played the tuba for seven years and lettered for four years. His future plan is to attend college and major in music. Our next senior is Josh Tilly. He's being escorted by his parents, Angela Beavers and James Beavers. He has played the snare for seven years and lettered for four years. 
Josh is special awards include first place percussion and band competitions. His future plans include going to college, to a technical school, become a diesel mechanic while playing music with James Tilly and Dylan Douglas Newell. The next senior is Jarrett Danielle Walker. He is being escorted by his parents Daniel and Jennifer Walker. He has played the baritone for seven years and lettered for four years. Jarrett's special awards include Fans Finest Award for Outstanding Public Performance on Baritone and Trumpet. His future plan is to attend North Georgia Technical College to study paramedic and always follow God's plan for his life. The next senior is Faith Watkins. She's being escorted by her parents, Mike and Renee Watkins, her brother, Will Watkins, and her grandparents, Charlie, Lola Farmer, and Ernest and Barbara Watkins, her cousin, Matthew Watkins, and her aunt, Michelle Farmer. Faith has played the baritone for six years and lettered, lettered for four years. Her special awards include being named Miss Rebel 2018 and Fan's Finest in 2017 and 18. Faith's future plan is to go to college, work in the medical field as a pediatric surgeon, and to follow God's plan for her future. Our next senior is Kaylee Workman. She's being escorted by her parent, by Leela Garcia, her brother Mason Workman, and her sister Sophia Garcia. Kaylee has been a member of the Color Guard for four years and lettered for four years. She has also been a member of the Key Club, FCCLA, and FGE. Kaylee's future plan is to become a special needs teacher. Our senior cheerleaders are next. First is Morgan Emily Mole. She's being escorted by her parents Michael and Betsy Mole, along with Sister Madison. She has cheered for seven years and is also a member of FCCLA. Her future plan is to pursue a career in cosmetology. Senior senior is Abigail O'Neill. She's being escorted by Dwayne and Tiffany O'Neill. She has lettered and cheered for three years. She has also participated in cross country and track. She is a member of HOSA, National Honor Society, and the National Technical Honor Society. She has received the Victory Cheerleader Award, Veterans Award, and the United Cheer Association All-American Cheer. Her future plan is to attend UNG or Dalton State and become a registered nurse. Our next year senior is Kendall Elizabeth Postel. She's being escorted by mom Stacy, dad John, sisters Anna and Kaylin, and brothers Matthew, Caleb, and Michael. She has cheered for seven years and lettered for three. She is a member of the Future Georgia Educators and selected as cheer captain and voted most dependable. Her future plan is to attend Dalton State and major in early childhood education, become a teacher and coach, get married, and have a family of her own. Our next year senior is Bailey Sue Williams. She's being escorted by Mike and Carrie Williams. She has led for three years and been involved in competitive dance. She's a member of the National Art Society, Thespian Troop 6592, and won Most Spirited Cheer Award, Spanish Two Award, the UCA All-American Cheerleader, Cheer Captain, and the winner of Fannin County's Dancing for the Stars. Her plan for the future is to become famous for good things. seniors of the cross country team. Our last senior tonight is Nick Lehmeister. He is being escorted by Christine Callahan. He is a part of the Tone Society and the Thespians. His future plan is to pursue science. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for our seniors.
schools participating in this event are members of the Georgia High School Association that have adopted the rules under which the games are conducted. A strong commitment to excellence, fair play, and sportsmanship are all vital to the success of the football game. The Fannie County High School administration and staff would like to welcome you to tonight's football game between the Fannie County Rebels and the Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans. We have the potential for a great game. Let's show our support for these teams by promoting good sportsmanship, and we appreciate your attendance at Fannie County High School. Good evening, Rebel TV fans. Jeremy Green here alongside Andy Arp. And uh, I tell you, we are doing uh, something a little different tonight, uh, Andy. And we are going to be broadcasting here live on uh, FanandRebelTV.com, where you can go to YouTube, type in Fan and Rebel TV, and you'll find it there. But we're also going to be on cable tonight um, through ETC. That's going to be on ETC3 and then Channel 403 in high definition. So a number of ways to watch tonight and what you're watching uh, is going to be an exciting game as the Fannin Rebels here on senior night host uh, the number three team in class 3A in the state, GAC. GAC, that's loud isn't it? All right. GAC is uh, uh, the number three team, they've got seven D1 prospects, uh, one of the biggest one being uh, Chris Hinton's son and he is headed to Stanford. Now, uh, they, they are one of the toughest teams in the state. They like to run the ball. They like to throw the ball. They're a pretty well-balanced football team, so it's going to be a tough situation for us tonight. 
because we have a half a dozen folks out just like we had last week, Jeremy. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Cahutta Hyde leading receiver, 550 yards receiving, and that's on half a season. Oh, uh, yeah. Mason Bundy, your big lineman, Jalen Ingram, your tight end, Casey Owensby, all players out, and, and that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. So uh, if you're fanning, you're sort of coming in undermanned, and, and like you said, this GAC team, uh, really, really impressive. Their quarterback, Jackson Hardy, 6'4", 215, uh, will be a Richmond Spider next year. He's got over 1,600 yards. Tyler Bride, their uh, tailback, he will probably bust 1,000 yards tonight. He's headed to Georgia Southern next year. And so this GAC team comes in really loaded against an underman fan and team. But for the Rebels, it is senior night. They're going to be motivated. Uh, they're here uh, in, in some nice cold Blue Ridge weather. It's nice and frigid here tonight. Temperature is going to be down below freezing probably by the time we get done. And so uh, it's going to be an interesting interesting matchup. The folks in Atlanta with the Maxwell ratings say this is a 27-point spread, and so the Rebels will be trying to uh, keep it a lot closer than that. And, uh, you know, we were down on the field a little bit pregame, and uh, certainly uh, an exciting atmosphere. The seniors especially fired up uh, getting ready to go out there. Coach Cheatham uh, came up um, when I was talking to some of the guys, and uh, I won't quote him verbatim here, but uh, he said, we're, might, we're, we're here, we might as well go out and, and, and kick some tail. <laughs> we might as well play. Well, that's, you know, speaking of the injuries, at Thurning County, that really hurts us. When we've got five guys out, six guys, that's like having 10, 11 kids because they all play both weights. And, uh, you know, you were giving some stats on those kids. Luke uh, actually has 1,299 yards passing. And uh, Traylon has 1,085 yards rushing. You mentioned Cahutta Hyde has 550. Cahutta's out. Mosley leads the team in tackles with 75. But a lot of those stats, uh, they're in the top 5, 10, and triple A. Yeah. So uh, um, they're having a good year. We've lost uh, two out of the last three. We're at 6-3 uh, and three last night. And we're going to make the playoffs. Now, the thing on the playoffs, Jeremy, is the we're going to play Cedar Grove, and we're going to play them at Buck Godfrey Stadium in, in DeKalb. So what happens tonight is Southwest DeKalb plays, and if Southwest DeKalb wins, they'll play on Friday night. And if Southwest DeKalb loses, we'll play on Friday night. But if, like I said, if Southwest DeKalb loses, or if they win, we'll have to play on Saturday. And if we play on Saturday, Coach Cheatham uh, told me that we'll probably play early in the day. He'll try to make it a one, two, three o'clock ball game instead of a night game. You know, and, and that would be better for us traveling all the way to what they call it Pantherville. You ever been to Pantherville in not. Southwest of Cab? No, That's not. That is a place where um, Georgia State has all their intramural athletics and their baseball field and different things down there in Pantherville, and there's a lot of schools that use that particular stadium. So, uh, you know, it'll be a long ride, but it'll be a good. And Cedar Grove, number one in the state. Uh, it's going to be, we get number three, number one. That's a tough matchup ending the year. It is. And so let's talk about where we've been. We talked a little bit about where we're going. So uh, Fannin starts off the year great. Big win over Gilmer. Uh, big win over Lafayette. ETC actually had Lafayette uh, last uh, week, and that game went down to the wire. Pickens actually comes out with a win on what was finally a defensive stop, 49-45. And so um, you've, you've got big wins there. Um, you have some tough games, that Union game, where, where it looked like Fannin really had a chance to win, but they fall to Union. Um, and and their quarterback, one of the top passers in the state, was the top passer for quite a while. And so um, that, that was a tough loss. But we in your region game beat Cherokee Bluff, East Hall. And then over the last few weeks, as you mentioned, really tough matchups against North Hall um, and then with injuries against Dawson County. But last week, uh, sort of picking up another region win to secure that playoff spot, the uh, statistic that jumps out to me, Traylon Owensby last week, 247 yards on the ground and two touchdowns to really salt that game away against Lumpkin. Have you had an opportunity to see uh, Traylon run? Yeah, absolutely. Tra Traylon is uh, he's an interesting running back. Uh, he, he, uh, he's a strider, and he, he's got good hips when he moves through the line, and he, he's, uh, he gets a lot of yards after contact. 
and he, he's uh, we're going to miss him. He is a senior, and uh, that that's going to hurt us. But now we're a team mainly made up of juniors, and uh, which will help us help us next year. But you're right. In the past, we had some physical football games. Uh, Lafayette was a physical football game. Union County was a physical football game, and we got behind early at Union, and uh, the reason. You know, we just had a couple things that went wrong uh, early in the ball game, and we got behind, we got back in the ball game, got it to seven, but they eventually pulled away from us. They, Union has a good football team. They have, uh, they've always had a good football team. Yeah, and, uh, that was a, a tough game, and tough games, as you mentioned, uh, ahead. And this one tonight against GAC, Traylon Owens be yards after contact. Definitely going to need that. And so uh, we'll see how that plays out. Next week, though, you mentioned Cedar Grove. So Cedar Grove is interesting to me. Um, th this year they played in the Cam Newton Invitational down in opening year, and they played my high school, Central High School in Phoenix City, Alabama, uh, defending Class 7A state champions over there in Alabama. And uh, it took Central uh, scoring a touchdown on the final drive to beat Cedar Grove. They are, they are a tough, tough program, and that's going to be a challenge for the Rebels. But you get better. Andy, by playing those kind of games. This is experiences that none of these Rebels have had before. I think going to Calhoun last year was a great uh, experience. And, and, yeah, the, that's a game that you lost. Cedar Grove is going to be a tough game to win. But, you know, you're talking about where this program is going. And I think this is just a, a huge milestone for this Phantom Rebel program. Oh, yeah, it is. And uh, we've made the playoffs two years in a row. And we've played some good football teams uh, to start the year. We We've played, as a matter of fact, uh, on our games, we've played 4A teams. Uh, in Lafayette, 4A. They are. Gilmer's 4A. Uh, I know Gilmer's down a little bit, but they're still a 4A school. Right. And they're getting better every week uh, that I've noticed. So are they getting ready to do the national anthem? It looks like we've got our eyes down there. We want to send you down to the field as soon as they're ready for the national anthem, but we will... Uh, kind of keep your eyes on that. You mentioned the Gilmer Bobcats last week. Uh, they almost pull off the upset of the season against Ridgeland. Fall just a little bit short, but that 41-9 to win over the Bobcats really starting to look like a lot better win uh, as they play. We're going to send it down to the field now. It is time for our national anthem, so it'll be the Fanning County Rebel Marching Band playing our nation's national anthem. And please remain standing and remove your hats as we honor our great nation with the playing of our national anthem by the Fannin County High School Band. rendition there of the Star Spangled Banner as it always is and so uh, we appreciate the good job that the marching band does uh, getting the crowd ready I tell you what on a frosty night it takes a lot to get people on their feet so hopefully this Fan Air Rebel team will be able to have some explosive plays that uh, that do that just very briefly uh, we're about five minutes or so away from kickoff now four minutes before 
kickoff. So the band will be hustling off the field and the teams will be coming on. But we do want to go around the area just a little bit. Um, in the south of us, uh, Pickens County is off tonight. They finished up their season. Depending on what happens in the Heritage Northwest Whitfield game, they'll either be the number three or four playoff team. They'll be traveling over to Oconee County, which will be a tough matchup for them. Uh, in the first round. Gilmer finishes up their season tonight on the road at Lafayette. That for them, I believe, is a, a winnable game, uh, and that would put them at four wins, and I think that'd be a huge milestone in Coach Kevin Saunders' first that, year. That would be a huge milestone. Now, uh, Oconee, their quarterback is uh, Brad Johnson's son. You know, Brad Johnson yeah. that used to play for Tampa Bay. Yeah, wow. Yeah, he is. Uh, he, he plays... And he's, uh, I guess he's Mark Rick's nephew. Yeah. So he plays at Oconee, and he's pretty good. Uh, they had a ball game with North Oconee last week and wasn't expecting, uh, expecting to be a good ball game, and they blew out North Oconee. So that was a big win for them. Yeah. And they moved down to AAA. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, um, Pickens will either be playing, as you mentioned, North Oconee or Oconee County based on that. Pickens holds the tiebreaker over Northwest Whitfield, but not against Heritage. And so we'll see how that goes. Uh, just uh, down the road from us, uh, across the state line in Tennessee, how about the Copper Basin Cougars hosting uh, a playoff game in Coach Chad Grabowski's sophomore season? And uh, just what's been a great year, they, they've ended on a sour note a little bit, lost to McMahon and lost to Andrews at homecoming, and then were, uh, were, were beaten pretty good last week by a great South Pittsburgh team. But uh, they're going to be hosting a small school out of Nashville tonight, an opportunity to win a, a playoff game. And um, the reward would be traveling to a 10-0 Monterey team. And so we'll see how that, uh, how that goes. But we certainly want to wish the Cougars luck. And we, I saw them play. We played them early in the year in the scrimmage game. And uh, they were a good football team and had a good year. With our captains are there on the field, Jackson Week and Miles Johnson, Will Mosley, and there's Lou Holloway. Yeah, I tell you what, there's a, a big battle on this team to see who has the best head of hair. And, uh, two of your candidates out there uh, at midfield, in Jackson Weeks and Lou Holloway. We we do have, and then you've got Traylon, uh, the two Owensby boys, uh, Kaysen and Traylon. They look, I tell them they look like uh, like a 1970s Leonard Skinner rock band is what I always tell them. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good time, and that's, uh, that's coming back. Becoming popular again is the long hair. Um, as we mentioned, uh, Copper Basin, I wanted to make sure we got the name right. It is Gordonsville. Uh, Gordonsville, Tennessee, a town of 1,214 residents. And so uh, big city, two big city schools in Basin and Gordonsville playing each other tonight. Just uh, just east of Nashville is Gordonsville. And what is Gordonsville's record? They are uh, they are three and eight, I believe. So we ought to have a pretty good ball game tonight. Yep, should we'll try to keep you abreast of that score as it goes on tonight. GAC has made their way onto the field, and then as always, we have a great entrance led by the American flag. These fan and rebels, especially the seniors, coming out of that big helmet, and it is going to be. A fired up team here as you see them making their way onto the field. One of the most uh, exciting things that you see in sports, everybody coming onto the field fired up, fanning wearing those blue jerseys, uh, and some really good looking jerseys, unless Andy, you're trying to see the number on the back of it. They're not, <laughs> not quite as good looking. Well, let me tell you this, Jimmy, those jerseys are a hundred percent better than what we had. Do you remember that the, 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 two the, years the gray ago? gray gradient, yeah. Oh, you, you, and the uh, GHSA made a new rule this year that you can't have the same number color as your jersey. And we've played a half a dozen teams uh, that have like white jerseys, white numbers outlined in, in purple. And I'm wondering when the rule goes into effect. So <laughs> and grandfathered in. I'm sure. I'm sure they don't want to strap, uh, you know, schools with the financial problem of buying new uniforms right now. But I'm sure at some point they've got to change. But I agree with you. It is. Uh, we are difficult to see. The best uniforms we got are the white ones. We got white ones, blue pants. You can actually see our numbers. That's right. The, uh, the white jerseys are always helpful. And so uh, look at there who's out there getting ready to kick the ball off. It is senior night. And so 
Sarah Sosby will kick the ball off to GAC. And as we mentioned, this is a juggernaut of an offense. And so uh, we'll Sarah be trying Sosby to see what, uh, what they do. You definitely probably want to keep the ball out of the hands of the returners. Looks like Tyler Bryan back there is the deep man. And so definitely want to kick it away from him. But we are just about ready to get underway. Senior night here in Blue Ridge, the Rebels and GAC, the Spartans. We are underway. A little squib kick to start it off. Now, oh, we got out there. We got him. That's not bad. Let's see. Who do we get? That appears to be Carson Beavers with a tackle. Carson Beavers, of course, uh, two-sport athlete. Uh, just absolutely excelled on the mound for that Fannin team last year who made a deep run into the playoffs. And, and he's, he's been a lockdown corner all year for us. And uh, he struggled a little bit. He's had ankle problems all year. But uh, he's hung in there and played really well. So here we go. The Spartans out there on offense, led, of course, by senior quarterback Jackson Hardy, six foot four, 215 pounds. But they start it with a run play, and they're going to rip off about 10. That's Tyler Bride, who is going to be looking to surpass the 1,000-yard mark here in his senior season and that's going to get him to about 945 946 close to 50 yards to get there well it looks like they've got Hinton playing left tackle and number 72 playing night right tackle 72 is a sophomore <coughs> first passing play for the big quarterback get him right how about there. that a big sack for a five <coughs> yard loss the rebel defense swarming to the ball for a big tackle and uh, that is big number 92. And 92 is a freshman, Logan Lone. How about that? Will Mosley in on that stop as well. So that's huge to put GAC behind the sticks here, second and long. Quarterback just ran out of real estate there. So we'll see what they do on second and down. They turn around and they hand it off to their stud running back, and he's got some room as he busts it to the outside. Going to be close to that first down marker. Runs out of bounds. Not sure about that. If you're GAC's coach, you would like to see him maybe yeah, tuck his head and get that first down, but it will be third and short here. Number four is a good player. He has uh, he is committed to Georgia Southern. So they've got seven D1s, and they, uh, they appear to have some, some extra large individuals, don't they? They do. So the running game has worked well so far. We'll see what they do here. Third and short. A big opportunity for this Rebel defense to stand up. They will hand it off oh, up the middle. Oh, and he ducks his head and just picks up the first down. We did a little stunt there, and uh, we just missed him. Uh, 92 just missed him, Logan Long. Now, uh, you had mentioned Tuggle earlier. Tuggle is third in AAA in sacks. And uh, he's, he's had a good – he's really came on toward the end of the year uh, rushing the quarterback. So GAC has to fight for that first down, but they do pick it up. We'll see what they do here. A little fake on the end around, and quarterback has a wide open receiver out there. That is into the hands of number 23, Zach Mixon, senior wide receiver, 5'11", 170. And uh, that was a little pitch and catch there for GAC. Yeah, he just threw it in between uh, in the, between the corner and the outside, strong safety, and uh, which it looks like it looks like uh, Beavers is playing a little more back, almost safety uh, instead of corner. That must be a pretty pretty quick kid at receiver. So first down, little pass play out wide and. They, Good tackle. Yeah, they bottle him up. Andre out there playing corner on defense. Brooks Miller, the junior wide receiver with that catch, and that's going to be just a little bit short of a first down. But GAC rolling here. We, we expected that. This is a talented offensive team. We'll see uh, what Fanning can do to slow them down. The, this first drive usually scripted, so Coach Tim Hardy and his staff sort of sat down and said, you know, what can we do? What matchups can we exploit? And so – It'll be up to this Fan and Rebel coaching staff to make the adjustments next time out. Good defense. Oh, man. They have him bottled up, and he cuts all the way back. We go to get a flag. Yeah, it is a flag there. That's probably going to be holding there on the outside. He did call holding. 
Tell you what, this Phantom Rebel team, Andy, is really good in pursuit. They've they've had that bottled up in the backfield several times. Oh yeah, and they, they appear to be getting across the line of scrimmage. They've uh, they they've uh, got good penetration from our defensive line, and uh, our defensive line this week we've got Logan Long at nose tackle. We've got um, oh I can't. Well, they're substituting for him now. They're putting in Dalton Ross. Dalton Ross is a is a small kid, but he's a tough kid. We just moved over uh, Tuggle to nose tackle and brought uh, Ross over here to this left tackle. Or right tackle, I'm sorry. So here we go. We'll see if that pressure can continue. It's second down after that. The quarterback's going to keep it this time. Didn't expect him to run a whole lot, but he's a pretty good runner, and he's going to get down just a few yards short of that first down marker. It's a big third down. Third and what, three? Yeah, I'm going to be third and uh, about three. By the way, we are um, live on YouTube, so uh, if you want to send us some comments, ask some questions, we'd love to interact with you. Once again, we, we are streaming all over the place, fanandrebeltv.com, or you can just go to YouTube. We are broadcasting on ETC Channel 3 and in high definition on 403, so lots of places to see this big third down play. They're going to hand it off to their big tailback. They They've got him up. Stop. He's going to be short. He is short. How about that big stand by the Rebel defense? We'll see if Coach Tim Hardy is going to send his field goal unit out or if he's going to test that defensive front once again. Well, we're putting the big package in. We brought Miles in. We brought Logan in. They're going. Yeah, I can't blame them here. You know, they've got to be frustrated. They had that ball in the end zone only to be brought back. That's, a, little, that's a long yard, too, maybe even fourth and two. So here we go. They snap the ball, hand it off to their back. He's able to get across that line and all the way down to the two. So a big push up front from that Spartan offensive line. Yeah, that was nice, nice running play. Weeks uh, in on the tackle. So sort of a deflating moment there, but if you're fanning, you've got to love the uh, intensity and effort from your defense. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we forced them on a four-minute drive, which is big in this type of ball game. Make them drive the football. Don't give up anything easy, and there is a touchdown. Yeah, so the opening score for GAC, but as you mentioned, you want to limit the possessions. You go back and forth, and so Fannin will get their chance to answer that opening salvo, but it is an impressive-looking touchdown drive for this GAC team. Once again, ranked number three in the state, and really, if you judge by the reclassification that happened this week, this is Fannin jumping up two classifications. Fannin, of course, is going to be sent down to double-A, uh, next year based on school enrollment and GAC because of that new two uh, person multiplier rule will be headed up to class 4A next year pending the appeal extra point is up and good it's going to make it 7 nothing GAC that's a good kicker you know um, Jeremy the state of Georgia years ago the story is Tom Murphy who used to be speaker of the house um, he was from Bremen and they had a private school beat up on Bremen over there one year so he he added a multiplier and started and it forced all your city schools and your private schools to play up well when he died uh years ago about 15 20 years ago they did away with the rope and they've come back down but they've had so many city schools and private schools winning state championships that they've they've adjusted the role now yeah and they've they've and uh and, you know, from a Fanning County standpoint, I think it's a good rule. From a GAC, they don't think it's a good rule, and they're going to appeal the fact that they're moving up to 4A and try to move back down to 3A. Yeah, and so we'll see how that turns out. A lot of schools, I think, were really surprised the other day when the classification came down. That ball is going to go through the end zone uh, for a lot of schools. Class 4A's Blessed Trinity defending state champion, uh, Greater Atlanta Christian, St. Pius, who jumps up from 4A all the way to 6A. Um, and then uh, also uh, Woodward Academy, they all jump up. Also Buford, who's um, one of the winningest schools in 5A, moves up. Calhoun jumps up a classification. Carrollton, another one of those powerhouses, boom, jumping back up. And so 
Um, interesting. Uh, but some of the schools that won't be moved, I was really surprised to see the War Eagles of Marist stay down. Love it stays in 3A. Love it is the only team to beat this GAC team, beat them 30-29 to 29, uh, in the opening game. So uh, pretty interesting there. The Rebels are going to pick up a free five yards on this first play. Yeah, Luke does a really good job with a hard count. Um, he probably gets he gets the other team to jump two to three times a ball game. And uh, he must have a and, – and you and I both know Luke. He's, he's a pretty quiet kid, but he must have a pretty strong voice out on the field. Yeah, absolutely. So first and five, we love that if you're uh, Coach Cheatham and this staff. Coach Cheatham has done a great job here in his second – year uh two years in a row making the playoffs that'll make the folks in blue really happy and uh hopefully moving up from there play action on the first play luke looking He's for a receiver oh. yeah. andre andre had a step on number two yeah so uh you had a couple guys coming across there will mosley knocks it down don't know if he was the intended receiver or not had a guy a little bit deeper but well, one of, one, one of the things, we're missing our big right tackle, Mason Bundy. And uh, Mason's 6'6", 290, and we've, uh, we've just been shifting people around on the offensive line trying to find people that can play. I've uh, been down on the field a couple of times with Bundy. How about this big running play? owens has got some room. He's breaking out towards the middle of the field all the way into GAC Spartan territory. A huge first down run there for the Rebels. Tray, Traylon, like I said, Traylon's got good hips. Traylon runs the ball well. He, he, he's a shifty type runner, as Kevin Painter would say, uh, that was a scamper. There we go. So what a great uh, run there. First big play, and those chunk plays are going to be important if you're going to keep up offensively. Oh, that was a nice run there. Ran it right off, off left guard, which playing left guard is weeks. What do we got going on? Clock trouble. Clock has stopped. We'll try to figure it out while we do that. Thanks for the comments. Melinda Michelle asks, who are the Phantom Rebels playing in the playoffs? That's going to be Cedar Grove. And uh, as we talked about a little bit pregame, that will either be Friday or Saturday. Cedar Grove currently the number one ranked team in AAA. And so uh, going to be a tough task for Fannin. But the task at hand tonight, also tough. But they seem up to it so far. First down, another handoff, and another good gain. So trying to stay ahead of the sticks. And I tell you what, Andy, if you can run the ball, um, that's going to be uh, really, really helpful for and it, GAC. And it's going it, to be big for us to shorten the game. And what they're doing, they're keeping the clock on the field. It's showing 725 still. So they're keeping the clock on the field now. That will make it a little more our job a little more difficult. So, yeah, another going to yep. be another stoppage. They're just trying to figure it out. They just cut it off. Cut off the scoreboard. But, uh, you know, as luck would have it, uh, Jeremy, last year we made the playoffs, and each year they, they rotate uh, when you've got seven, eight, and what is it, six, seven, eight, and nine, and you rotate every year who you play in the playoffs. So last year we drew – Number one, uh, Calhoun, defending state champion. So this year we draw number one, Cedar Grove. So we, do, we haven't had too much luck in who you're going to draw in the playoffs. But from that standpoint, number four seed, you're going to, you're going to play somebody pretty good no matter who you draw. That's right. I just hate to be the number one team every year. Yep. So, so uh, And speaking of, uh, while we got a little break here, let me run down our sponsors, uh, which is Blue Jeans Pizza, Blue Ridge Barber Shop, Blue Ridge Corn Shop, Gracie Barra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Brotherhood Oil, CrossFit 30513, Fan and Empty Stocking Fund, ETC Security, Fan and Regional Hospital, Kevin Painter Insurance, Kiwanis Club Blue Ridge, Messiers Orchard, Brian Tessarillo Realty, Nathan Fitz, Susan DuPont, Steve Tucker Realty, Super Clean Car Wash, Schwann Drive-In, Town and Country Furniture Trailer Drive-In, Tri-State EMC, True Fitness Georgia, and United Community Bank. So we are also, we get a lot of people, Jeremy, 
We're on uh, WXFC Rebel Radio 92.7, and I know we have a lot of folks, especially uh, EMTs and different things like that, that can't make it to the ball game, that work night, people out at the hospital that listen to the ball game on radio. But like you said, with YouTube, I picked up YouTube last week in Jacksonville, and uh, that that was an excellent, excellent deal. And then you've got uh, people like my mother. Who loves ETC3? Well, there you go. And uh, so she gets to watch the ball game, stay home. It's just a little too cold for her. Yeah, I tell you what, a lot of people were, were trying to figure out where they could watch it. And so, as you mentioned, a lot of places to whether you want to listen, watch, whatever you want to do, we're bringing it here to you. Last week we had two ball games uh, going at the same time on ETC. And so, our goal, no matter what, is to bring you uh, local high school sports so that you can see uh, these teams. We are having a lengthy delay down on the field as they try to sort out this clock issue which you really hate to see because Fannin the, the offense had some momentum going there and so oh, yeah. uh, this is just going to freeze everybody up well uh, while we've got some time uh, <coughs> let me read off the seniors now if you didn't join us early we had a uh, we had the se seniors come out with their parents and there's a lot of seniors so recognizing in football we have Carson Beavers JoJo Godwin, Miles Johnson, Ethan Mann, Billy Mitchell, uh, Mitchley, I'm sorry, Will Mosley, Traylon Owensby, Sarah Sosby. Uh, speaking of Sarah Sosby, uh, somebody told me earlier today she's number three in the state in extra points. And she doesn't miss many. I've maybe seen one in the last two years. And she does a heck of a job with extra points. And we've got Jacob Toggle, Jackson Weeks, Gabe Willis. In sports medicine, we've got Claire Cobb, Lila Helton, Courtney Kendall, and ah, Caden Rich. But it looks like we're back to action. We will get to the band at some other time. So after what seemed like a really long delay, it's going to be second down at about seven for this uh, Fan and Rebel offense. Holloway hands it off and Osby, wow, what a big lick laid on him there close to the 40-yard line. That was a big time collision that you're seeing on your screen there. And Fannin, Fannin in the power eye run uh, right off left tackle. It, it appears uh, we're going to run left tonight uh, right behind Miles Johnson and Jackson Weeks, a couple of seniors. So going to be third down and about three here, and you're almost in four-down territory, Andy. We'll see what they do if they come up a little bit short here. You would assume this is a throwing situation, and Luke backs up into the shotgun as we see a pre-snap shift. Oh, we're going to run. Oh, man. And off thought he had it, but he is brought down there. Those I thought he had it, linemen. too. Will Mosley uh, on the K and big number 75 brought him down. That, that was that was an excellent play. I thought he I thought he was going to make it there, and it just just he shed the block just in time to make the tackle. So fourth and two, the Rebel offense is out there. Luke is the punter, so if they wanted to drop back into a pooch punt formation, you could. But all signs point to going for it. We see uh, that, they're up on the line. Yeah, they're bringing the house. Up. And Coach Cheatham going to take a timeout and try to talk about it and that's probably a good decision now you can see what the defense is doing as you mentioned some giants out there on defense for GAC big number 72 who we mentioned earlier Addison Nichols 6'5 290 uh, sophomore stud player 78 Miles Hinton uh, 6'7 320 that's eating some biscuits he's uh, going to Stanford a, and, and apparently he's a smart kid too Yeah, if he's going to Stanford that last play uh you had both ends walk up, both linebackers walk up. They were getting ready to send the house. I think we had to, uh, we might have had the wrong play call there. And you, uh, We thought maybe we'd see a hard count from Luke. Instead, what they do is uh, they shift into a different formation and try to get them to jump, but n no such luck. But I think you got to be satisfied whether you pick up this fourth down or not with the way your offense moved. You think that in this game, physicality is going to be an issue, and you look at the size of those guys and you say, oh, how do we – create some space but there's been a lot of room for Owensby to run at least here in this opening possession it is and and one of the things uh that's difficult about playing a GAC is uh they've got 
a lot of kids, you know, they play 22, 30 kids where we're playing 15 to 20. And it, as the game wears on, it makes it difficult on us. So getting this first down would be big for us. Carrie, uh, Carrie Thomas says she loves watching on YouTube. She is at home snuggled up under her blanket. So I'm a little bit jealous there. And uh, you're going to watch this fourth down from the comfort of the couch. Holloway lines up under center. He's checking off. Yeah, looking around and clock still not working. So they are going to run the play. They run it up the middle. Oh, oh. it's going to be close. And he didn't get it. Yeah, going to be stopped. I love the aggressiveness there. I love the uh, we're going to hit you in the mouth. And they come up just a little bit short. So good stop by GAC. And Fannin is turned away. And uh, they will turn the ball over on downs. But if you're uh, the fans in the stands or the folks at home, you have to love Coach Cheatham's confidence and saying we're just going to run it down your throat. I, I, th I think he got a little more than what they gave him, but he still didn't get the first down no matter, no matter how you cut it. So first down and ten. I got to ask you a question after this play that somebody brought up two weeks ago. Here we go. So a big run and play look at big 78 out there. Clear in space, and uh, he also made the tackle as his running back <laughs> runs into it. Oh, number five comes up, makes a tackle. Uh, number five, Seth Reese. Seth's had a good year. He's had a good year. He's played uh, basically rover defensive end. And uh, Tra not trailing, but Kaysen Owensby was our other defensive end uh, slash rover. We didn't rotate it. We just backed off one, one on each side. Oh, big hole. Yep, we got Weeks eventually ran him down on the 30-yard line. Big gain, bring up a first down. So GAC moving the football. All righty, sorry about that. We're trying to... Deal with some technical issues. You got a good crew up here, Andy. They 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 uh yes, know what they, to do and how to fix it and all those things. They do a good job. Make my job a lot easier. Tell you what, a lot of space for GAC. This offense really, really moving. Big hit there. That was so, a nice hit. Andre with a big hit. Comes up a little <laughs> I think that may have hurt Andre more than it hurt the receiver. He's having to shake it off a little bit. Bringing big miles in. We're going to bring in the big package. Yeah, so uh, definitely a huge momentum shift here. You get that stop um, on fourth down, and now GAC is down here uh, at your 10-yard line again. So got to rise up big, big here if you're the Fannin defense. Yeah, Fannin's in a 5-2, expecting them to run the football. And they're going to do exactly that, and they nice get play. a big stop. Nice play. It should be pretty interesting with Big Miles in there. We haven't been playing him and Bundy a lot on defense. They've been spot playing. It's, uh, you know, up until the last couple of weeks, it's been really hot. Uh, I mean, really hot. And it's just difficult for those kids to go, um, you know, both ways. Right. Uh, and be productive. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to watching Miles and match up against big number 72 and big number 78. That's that's some large individuals there. That, that left tackle 78 is an absolute monster. He had six seven. So it will be a passing situation. Quarterback looking for some room, and he Ooh. finds it over in the end zone, wide open for a Spartan touchdown. That was blown coverage there. Um, I think Traylon. I'm not sure if that's Traylon or Andre out there at corner of safety. That may be JoJo. JoJo got one on that on that inside receiver. So uh, it is a touchdown. So extra point away here from going up 14 to nothing. But we will see what what happens here. We knew this GAC team was talented. and They were going to come down here and and score. But that drive looked really really easy for GAC. Yeah, and, you know, down at uh, Dawson County a few weeks ago, Jeremy, we uh, 
we had we had a lot of yards in the first half, and we got inside the 20 three times, got in the red zone three times where we came away with no points. And we've got to uh, we've got to figure a way to convert. When we have a good drive like that, we pick up you know 40, 50 yards and got a fourth and one. We've got to figure out somehow how to get the ball in the end zone. Absolutely. So you have to have an answer here. Down already 14 to nothing. Can't afford to go down any more than that. Still a couple minutes left in this first period. And you knew GAC would have a good kicker, didn't you? Yeah, of course. You don't see many private schools that doesn't have uh, a well-rounded football team, including a really good kicker. GAC, big private school down in Norcross, associated with the Churches of Christ, and uh, has really become a haven for uh, really exceptional athletes. This one is returned, though, out to about the 27, 28, maybe slam down to the 29-yard line. Good return right there for the Rebels. Andre on the return. That's that's a uh, that's a nice run back. So we'll see if they open the offensive playbook up a little bit here. GAC has sort of keyed in on Owensby after that first big run. And we'll see, uh, you know, we mentioned in the outset, and, and we were sort of talking about this, when you've got Ingram, your big tight end out, Kahuta Hyde, your leading receiver, you're sort of looking around and say, all right, if we're going to run a passing play, who do we throw it to? And that's sort of been the issue here, I think, with these injuries. Who is playing right tackle for us? Anybody, can y'all get a number on that? Handoff there going to be a, another short gain. Will up a yard on the play. I know our right tackle uh, is usually Bundy. Can you get a number on that on the right tackle? Yeah, I hate to say it, but uh, I, I agree with you. Our numbers, they're new uniforms, so we're, we're stuck with them for four years. They look good. They're just hard to see. Yeah, and uh, not – I don't know about you, but I don't have a great set of eyes either, so <laughs> hard to see down there. No, I'm getting a little older myself. Well, 57's Ricardo. I believe that. Uh, Ricardo's, uh-oh. That, uh, that was a nice dangerous catch. throw there by Luke all the way across the field to the other side, and uh, they jumped that route and could have been picked off, but it's complete. It's going to bring third and about four or five. JoJo Godwin on the reception. He's he's had a pretty good year since kahuta has gone out. He rotated a lot early on, but uh, uh, he and uh, Andre rotated a lot. But now with Cahuta out, uh, he and Andre are the starters. So another big time third down. We'll see what they come up with. Run. He does a little hard count that time. Nobody jumps though. Play action. Holloway rolls out. Got a little bit of room. Looking for an open receiver. Nice and play. he finds one. Big time first down throw into the hands of Seth Reese, a sophomore receiver. Seth and his brother, um, who is up at Carson Newman playing tight end, uh, comes from a good family of receivers. He And he's had a good year. He's had a really good year on defense. And just lately with Jalen, Going out, he's been playing uh, the tight end position. Reese also the backup quarterback, I believe. And, and the backup uh, quarterback. Catcher on the baseball team, so all-around good athlete. And there he picks up a much-needed first down reception. We may have to see if we can get him on the basketball team. He, he, he can't be bad. That's right. Little little size, never hurt anybody. Reese lifted, listed at 6'1", 185. That may have been last year. He looks a little right. bigger. How about that collision? And it looks like GAC has come up. That was With big 78. Football. Nope, nope. Owensby was able to hold on to it. Yeah, that was big Hinton there. Uh, came across the line. So I don't, I don't know how big Owensby is. Um, see if we don't have it listed here in front of me, but I uh, would say uh, Traylon's a pretty good sized kid. He's about six one, six two. Probably goes 195, 200 pounds. That time, though, went into the arms of a bear. Luke has to get rid of it quick. He finds Reese for a short gain. They're going to maybe give him a yard or two on the catch, but a good job just to get rid of it. So third and long upcoming here. We'll see what they come up with as Luke is over there talking with his coaches on the sideline. There was some uh, there was a pretty good route there. It just uh, we're, we're hoping to get a catch and run. 
I can't get over. How tall did you say? Seventy-eight. Yeah. Six seven. He's every bit of six seven. Isn't we he? uh we have been corrected. The receiver's name is not JoJo Godwin. JoJo Goodwin. Goodwin. I'm so, sorry. So thank you, Robin Trish, for uh, straightening Andy out. He needs all the help he can get up here. That's exactly right. I don't have Kevin Painter keeping me straight this week. Here we go. Third and long. Luke looking for a receiver. He's going to take off and run. He's got some room. Got to get over there to the sideline, and he does. Great job there, Luke, scrambling for the big first down. Nice play. You know, Luke's deceptively fast, and that brings us into the first quarter, I assume. That will do it. You know, there is a, a synonym, another word for deceptively fast. Slow would be slow. the word. <laughs> <laughs> he's small, but he's slow. There we go. That's right. No, Luke with a, with a great run, and... That first quarter ends now 14 to nothing, and so let's talk about why we have a second. What we've seen, uh, what we've seen is a lot of offense from GAC. Uh, really been able to do what they want to. Very balanced passing and throwing, and that's why they're the number three team in the state. And they and they are, and we've moved the ball well. Uh, we've stalled out a drive, but I mean we're we're working on this drive, and uh, you know we want to shorten the ball game. And we've got two possessions in the first quarter. They've got two possessions in the first quarter. We need to punch it in here, and we can get back in the ball game. Absolutely. For Fannin, you know, you're, it's 14 to nothing, but you're not overwhelmed. Um, you're, you're not, you know, um, not going to have to worry about, uh, oh, we can't stay on the field with these guys. This is your second time in a row now being uh, in Spartan territory. And so I think what you've got to do is just sort of have that confidence and keep plugging away so that uh, you can get that going and so um, we've seen I think Luke use a lot of different weapons tonight uh, with his primary targets out you've seen Reese with a couple big receptions we've seen Goodwin there with the catch we've seen Owensby um, you know moving the ball well I'm interested to see if we'll see some fullback runs with Mosley he's been pretty effective in that role we'll see if they try to go to that a little bit more in the second quarter he has we've ran him uh, on the trap uh, we went we played East Hall and Cherokee Bluff uh he carried the ball probably more times than Traylon did, so I guess a lot of that depends on what the game plan is. Uh, we must have saw something on the trap play and ran Mosley quite a bit, but one of the things Mosley does, uh, he's an excellent receiver too. He's, he's good at taking the ball out. Uh, one of the things also I was going to tell you, I've got a score here. I was getting ready to look it up, but uh, Matt Queen just texted me and said, Rabin, 14, Union County, zero. Yeah, that was going to be a tough matchup. And uh, Coach Allison actually did an interview with the uh, Georgia High School Football Daily folks this week and talked about that. And it's been a rough go. I think Rabin has won five in a row in that matchup, well on their way to number six, it seems like. So, you is, see a little late getting somebody on the field. Which is uh, frustrating. Nice run there. That's a good four, three, four yards. Let me ask you this. Uh, one of the guys, uh, which we've got uh, the Holloways and we've got Big Jim Ezel down on on the uh, chain crew, and one of the things that they told us the other day is, or the last set of officials that came in, they were going to mark it on the yard line regardless of where the ball was. Interesting. Is what the officials told them. They told them that was the new rule in the state of Georgia. We need to look that up. Yeah, definitely. That's an interesting thing because that can uh, have a big influence on a uh, first down, being a first down or not. How about this nice run. little running room? And how about the hit there delivered by Owensby and a little shove after the play was over. But that was a big-time hit delivered by Fannin. And I tell you what. Uh, there's a little little chippiness in this Rebel team tonight on senior night. Oh, yeah. That was – that was uh, he got his shoulders down, got it square, and ran right over. Who, number four? Number two? He ran right over number two. Yeah, I believe that. Number two, look at him. He's limping a little bit. He didn't uh, – That was – that's uh, Bryant Strother, the uh, six Another four good senior. Run. I say what, this fan in offensive front being very physical, I, just to be honest, I'm surprised by the push that they're getting up front. That's very, very impressive for a team that uh, is, is undersized against these opponents. Yeah, they, they, uh, they are running the ball and running the ball well. But that, that was an interesting thing about the officials, and that's uh, – now, Jim, he's been doing it for 30, 40 years. He, he was doing this when I was in 
high school. He's a big Auburn player. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah, it was uh, an Auburn graduate we were talking about down from graduated from T.R. Miller High School down in Bruton, Alabama, and uh, as he's all sides. And that was uh, that was just silly trying to uh, trying to bother the offensive line, and that's going to be close to a Rebel first down. Just giving it to him. So I, I get the feeling that GAC kind of felt like that they were just going to roll the ball out here and, and pick up this win tonight. And Fannin is um, is feisty, to say the least, and they're driving now almost in the red zone. Let's get down here and punch that in. So Luke's going to run this one, and he is going to pick up the first down. So uh, I love the, the usage of him so far uh, by Coach Cheatham. That's the second time once not designed, that time a design run. That's two big first downs. Oh, yeah. And uh, Chris Thickpen, now he is our offensive coordinator, and he's done a good job. He's He got the job two years ago. He used to be at the middle school, and he's moved up uh, from the middle school to offensive coordinator, where uh, middle school coaches now uh, is, is Joey O'Neill. And he does a good job. And Joey was down there on the field pregame as well, as we see a, a toss right here and some room out on the trailing. edge. And I tell you what, uh, Owens be looking for contact on these plays, and uh, he's down to about the 14-yard line. I had thought he was going to cut the ball back inside on that. He had a good hole on the inside, but like you said, he, uh, he looks to be a man on the mission, and uh, he's ready to take them on. So a lot of folks uh, watching us at home. Kevin Painter, the man who is conspicuous in his absence tonight, uh, says that we're sounding good all the way over in Athens. Um, be a big game there tomorrow with the That'll Missouri Tigers trailer. all the way down to the nine-yard line. So glad that he's able to hear us. Robin Trish, go fan and Jennifer Smith, let's go Rebel. So uh, a lot of folks staying in away from the cold watching us tonight. And uh, as we mentioned, you can be listening to us on the radio, WXFC LP 92.7. Um, or you can watch us, FanandRebelTV.com, or just find us on YouTube. Or if you're at home on cable, ETC3 and channel 403 in high definition. And thankfully, if you're watching in HD, Andy and I are not on camera. So that's even better. <laughs> that is even better. Third down and short here. They're going to run and looking for some room. And I he tell you what, I think he got it. Don't know about that. Spot the officials really didn't give him much at all, and it's going to be fourth down. I tell you what, I don't like that spot a bit. I don't like that spot either. I've noticed, uh, not to beat up on the officials, but I've noticed the officials this year, they seem to spot the ball, in my opinion, a yard behind where I think the ball is. And I don't know if that's something that they've been taught, you know, talking about people's knee going down and forward progress. And yeah, quarterback here. sneak. That's what I would do, I think. But a lot of guys up there, fourth down and one. They're going to run that toss, and he's going to have a first he's down. He's going to score. All touchdown. the way into the end zone for a Rebel touchdown. How about that call on fourth and short as the light display is on here inside the stadium. Touchdown, Rebels. Nice run by Traylon. Well, that makes a difference there, doesn't it? That is an impressive touchdown drive and I love the play call everybody expecting it to run up the middle and you run that toss play you've had success with and coach Cheatham and his staff fired up down on the sideline 78 yeah they're telling me 70, 78 Miles Johnson just pancaked the kid yeah he uh, definitely has the size to do that. that's going to be offsides against GAC so they'll you think probably Fannin will decline that and stay where they are on the extra point. You don't want to mess up uh, your spot. Well, I don't know if we, it looks like we took it, didn't we? Yeah. So here we go. We'll go for the extra point again. Luke Holloway is the holder. I don't know if we'll come out and throw the ball, but I expect us to kick it, just to be honest with you. I hope so, is all I've got to say. I hope so. So it will be offsides. They do decline the penalty. Yes, that's what go. we expect. You don't want to mess up the, the routine that you got going on. Kickers are uh, people of routine. They are people of routine. Creatures of habit, as you as you would say. They are uh, they are interesting. And you know, Sarah, one of the reasons she make it. Um, 
She yep. did. That Got was it, a girl. that was a bad snap, and uh, good job by Luke to get it down. Good job by Sarah. She almost had to jump to kick it. <laughs> that was a very high snap, and great job getting it down. So, here in our second quarter, with about seven and a half minutes left, it is fourteen to seven, as the folks are uh, continuing to just uh, let us know that they're watching on YouTube. We're glad that you're watching. Keep those comments coming, and we're uh, we're enjoying it just as much as you are. You know, one of the things about Sarah is Sarah uh, was a soccer player, and she's had four knee surgeries. And uh, she's, you know, she's had difficulty running and moving, so she went to kicking the football, which is uh, which is great. It's been great for the program for Sarah. Her, her dad, Mike, uh, was a classmate of mine. Uh, he probably graduated in uh, 1985. He's, he's a good kid. So I know he's enjoyed watching his daughter kick. I watched. Uh, I watched her interview. I, I've got to admit, I've got a soft spot for a small town Izzy. She was on the air with us the last time we were here for ETC. She's great, isn't she? Yeah, does a fantastic job. And she interviewed Sarah, and uh, I'm really, really impressed with that. Sarah with the kick, going to squib it that time. Picked up by the up man again. That's a good strategy if you've got somebody you trust. That's going to give GAC the ball all the way out at the 45 yard line. So. Not sure about that strategy, but we'll see if they change it up next time. Well, we had a kicker earlier in the year, and he's no longer with us. So when when he left the football team uh, on kickoffs, we went from uh, Jalen kicked off some, Cahutta kicked off some, where I think that's where Cahutta got his hamstring injury. And uh, now we've gone back to Sarah uh, kicking off, which – if you're going to squib it, she seems to do a good job. She does. Usually, you know, you don't have an up man that has such good hands, but GAC able to do that. The Spartans drop back. Quarterback Get looking right. Ball, ball. Ball's on the ground. Ball's on the ground. Oh, GAC. Looks like they come back up with it. on it? They oh, did. man. Actually, the quarterback comes up with the fumble. That would have been a huge shift in momentum, but Jackson Hardy able to fall on his own fumble. I'm not sure who knocked it out. Anybody get a number who knocked the ball? Nose man, big Logan Long. I tell you what, for a quarterback that's going to be playing college football, Jackson already a little indecisive. Looked like he wanted to let that go. Couldn't decide if he wanted to run, and uh, that time just lost the handle. And so, oh, good so, play! Get him right there. Had him bottled up in the backfield, and look at this. He's going to go all the way back across the field. Mercy. And he is going to probably score. He is going to score. Man, we hit him three yards deep in the backfield. Uh, you can't see this on camera, but Coach Cheatham is sitting there with his hands on his head. That was a great job, great game plan, great hit in the backfield, and just did not wrap him up. And, and this is going to Andy. This is one of my soapboxes, I guess. There's, there's this new fad in football. We see it at every level, junior high, high school, um, college, the NFL, to tackle people with a shoulder. And right. it makes great highlight films. It looks really good, except for half the time it doesn't work. When you tackle, you've got to use your arms, wrap up, drive through the body, and that would have been a huge stop. But instead, it's a touchdown for the Spartans. Oh, yeah. We, we made a great defensive play. Kid shot the gap, hit him in the backfield. We were getting ready to uh, look like Mike force him to punt, and he went – you know, what, what was the touchdown? 50 yards, but he ran 100? Yeah, at least. Uh, actually was hit, ran all the way back across towards his sideline and then cut all the way back across and actually almost ended up carrying a bass drum in the marching band down there in the end zone. So I've got another update. Rabin County, 21, Union County, zero. I feel like that that doesn't bother you that much when you say that score. No, I sir. Like you're okay uh, with it. You know, I'm okay with Union County. I like they've got a – Brian Allison is an excellent football coach, and they've got a good program, but it doesn't hurt me to see them lose. They've gone 9-0 and the last two years going into the Rabin game. And, uh, you know, Rabin – Rabin's an interesting program also. I – you know, the rumor is maybe they get a few kids out of Habersham, but I don't know. It could be. It could be. Uh, Habersham with a good program. Also, Hart County usually has a pretty good program over there in northeast Georgia. Another good kick return. This time um, he is swarmed at about the 26-yard uh, line. Um, in case you were looking for some uh, clarification on how 
we sound uh, Emma Holloway, one of the junior high basketball players and uh, a kid who I love, even though she gets on my nerves sometimes, says, you, sa- <laughs> you sound okay, I guess. <laughs> so, hey, a compliment from a seventh grader. We'll take it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, e- ETC does a great job up here in, in putting these ball games, basketball games, football games on the air. Um, let's see what happens here. Another big run. I tell you what, if you're a fan, and you, you have to keep doing this, right? I mean, you talk about it's 14-7, to 7, you have the ball on the ground and just miss it by inches, and now it's 21-7. to 7. But but you're, you're having your way, really, with the run game. So you keep plugging along, get the ball back after half, and uh, you're, you're in this ball game still, even though that was sort of a crushing blow. Yeah, and I expected uh, – I've expected this type of running game all year, and a lot of it hasn't materialized because a lot of teams we've been playing – has been sending seven at a time. And uh, GAC is playing a um, traditional defense, let's say. Yes. And uh, and it's allowing us to, to get some bodies and turn some kids and get some holes where the last two or three ball games we've played against North Hall and Dawson, they've sent seven every play, and you just it's difficult to block seven people with five people. And it's yes. uh, and it's really hurt us the last two ball games. So third and short here, big play upcoming. They hand it off and gonna pick it up and Uh-oh. continue Uh-oh. on the run. He has broken out all the way down the sideline. He's it's gonna, gonna be score. a foot race and it's gonna be another touchdown. Fannin, what a run! Oh, he he broke two, three tackles. Oh yeah, I don't believe uh, that number. Number two that he ran over, I don't believe he wanted any more of it, did he? I tell you what, in the midst of all that, if you're watching now on the sideline and you see somebody jumping 10 feet in the air and throwing arms and legs, that is Chad Cheatham. He is enjoying this ball game tonight, and that is a huge touchdown, 50-plus yards, and uh, just continuing to add to that total is Owensby. Oh, that was a terrific run by Traylon. Get up, Sarah. In there. That one is up and yes, sir. So just back where we were, 21 to 14. Only uh, one score separating, as we were uh, mentioning before we were interrupted. Got some scores for you over at Copper Basin, 6-6 six to six at the half. Oh, so, good uh, ball game. That's, that one is going good. Uh, for those folks that may be Bobcat fans or Dragon fans that are watching, Ridgeland is up on Southeast before only 14 to 7. So that's an interesting game. Ridgeland, one of those teams that really makes you scratch your head. Uh, Heritage over Northwest, 14 to 12, and so uh, we'll we'll see how that one plays out. I know the folks in Green will be rooting for Heritage in that game, so they can get that three spot instead of that four. Um, Gilmer and uh, Lafayette don't have any score to report, but we'll definitely keep our eyes on that and uh, try to keep you updated. Oh, now we do have a score. How about this? In the second quarter, Gilmer 14, Lafayette 7. So the Bobcats about that? going for a win over in Walker County. Like you said, that, you know, Gilmer keeps getting better. Hey, we got that one past the up man. And he's going to be stopped at about the 35. I tell you what, these folks sitting down in front of us in the stands, there's not as many of them as there would be if it wasn't uh, freeze, freezing outside, but uh, the folks that are here are enjoying it. What is the temperature now? 40 degrees, roughly speaking? It might be a little lower. A little colder than, than that. that. Charles Arp Jr. says, with a rebel yell, they scream, score, 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 and he's flexing on them. Great job. Kevin Painter, don't fear GAC, go rebel. So the folks even that aren't able to be with us tonight having a good time. One of your relatives there, Arp. That's not my That is here, my folks. brother. All right. So GAC hands it Uh-oh. off, and that is more <laughs> trouble. That is that is a different running back there. Now that's that's a uh, that's not number four, is it? Or is it? It is. And I tell you what, we've got something going on back behind the line of scrimmage. There was a a player, I believe it was Jackson Weeks, and there was a, one of the linemen for. GAC just lays on top of him, and uh, the I referee get, doesn't do anything. I'm not sure about that. It should be holding, isn't it? Yeah, when, when you drag somebody down and sit on top of them. Uh, we have been told the temperature is 34 degrees outside. 
Uh, so I'm glad we're in here. I am glad we're in here. Another handoff, and, man, I tell you what, they're going to have to make some kind of adjustment. And uh, he's just tripped up at the seven-yard line, but plenty of running room for the big tailback, Tyler Bride. And he is well over that 1,000-yard mark that he came into a clip. I think that's that a different – is that number four or number five? That's number five. That's a different – you got a name on number five. Yeah, number five is uh, Monte Bailey. He's a 5'7", 160-pound senior, so they've been rotating him in and out with Bride, and he is going to well, be stopped at about the one. I tell you, they are, uh, they, are not, they are not happy with this score, are they? It is 34 degrees. Uh, Johnny Chastain sent me a post, 34 getting down to 30 degrees tonight. So another big stop needed here. Don't want to let him sneak into the end zone too easy. Oh. And he is going to be able to do it. So another tough run and another GAC score. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at Weeks. He is still mad about whatever went on. Yeah, I would be too. That was uh, and and it was right there in front of the official. And I'm not sure what the official was looking at, but uh, he was just sort of being forced down. And every time he tried to get up, player would lay on top of him, and that uh. Can't have that going on, especially in a ball game that's this important and uh, this competitive so far. But GAC uh, almost seemed inevitable on that drive, just continuing to rip off chunk plays. And uh, extra point is up. Extra point is good to make it 28-14. to 14. Well, we went from each team having four- and five-minute drives to each team scoring in, uh, in less than two minutes on the last, last two or three drives. So uh, it's, we got a track meet now, and hopefully we can keep up with it. So uh, let me read these. Well, they're moving along. Everybody's moving along in this ball game. Yeah, ready to ready to kick it off. We are told that uh, over in Athens, where a lot of folks are getting ready for a game tomorrow, it's about 50 over there. So um, they're not they're not enduring the same thing that we're enduring over here in the mountains. But oh, I tell yeah. you what, I would much rather be here than Athens any day. <laughs> That's coming from an Auburn That's guy. Right. I, I right. think uh, I think we're pro probably pretty good. We usually talk about college football. Who's Auburn got? Auburn is uh, off this week, thank goodness. So we'll uh, we'll see. They got a they got a big matchup in a couple of weeks as the dogs come rolling into Jordan Hare Stadium. Oh, big return he there! The, the ball. ball is on the oh, ground. Oh no! It looks like that Fannin came up with it, but. Got to be careful with putting that ball on the ground. Who is, what number is that right there? 31. Not sure who was the return man on that. It looked like, I believe that was Bivens 11, but I, I could be mistaken. Uh, it may have been. Once again, hard for us to, to see way down there. We do have three minutes and 48 seconds left in this second quarter. Creeping on towards halftime. If you're a fan and you'd love to score here, make it a one-score game, and you do get the ball back after the half. So mm, We that. ran the belly and bam, bam, bam. Yeah, how about that little spin move to get a yard? At least kept it from being a loss. Came out. Uh, Miles, Miles is saying he wants to run the football behind him. He's he's beating his chest. He's ready to go. He he is wearing out this this defensive tackle over here. I'm sure he's probably letting him know about it too. Miles not a real shy kid. No. So Boom. They nice do. block on. You're right, uh, Leslie. He drove that linebacker ten yards. Tell you what, it was not meant to be that time though. They're bottled up in the backfield. Now you're going to have third and nine. So it looks like it's going to be up to Luke to make a play. Now, we haven't thrown the ball deep at all yet. JoJo Goodwin. Goodwin, yes, sir. Goodwin coming in the ball game. His grandparents are watching, and you do not want to mess up a kid's name in front of their grandparents. No, I, I, assure you. I apologize. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little, a little dyslexic. I just kind of read what, what comes to mind. So play action here, Holloway. Drops back. He's got plenty of time looking for a nice receiver. Nice throw. Nice catch. First down. Absolutely. The uh, GAC sideline trying to say he was short, but he was well past 
Oh, uh, he, did he hold him short? Nope. They're going to move the chains. That was first nice down. Play. Yep. You know, Luke's got a strong arm. He really does. He, and uh, he, he's able to put touch on the ball, too. Uh, he's, he's had a really good year throwing the football this year. I agree. I agree. That the spot was uh, about a yard behind, but we got a first down out of it. Two minutes to go. Clock ticking. So they run the ball out wide again, looking for some more space. Owensby finds it, and he's going to be out to about the 39-yard line. Four starting to get down, like you said, and uh, blo and block tackle with his shoulder instead of wrapping up. I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he wants any more trailing. That is the uh, the big running back, Tyler Brides. But we've seen him actually used a lot more, as you mentioned, on uh, on defense tonight. And Monte Bailey has carried the load the last several drives, and I see why. He is a tremendous running back listed at 5'7", 160. Luke back in the shotgun now. So uh, as the clock ticks, he's going he's gonna to run, look for a little bit of room. He's brought down from behind, and uh, he's going to be about a yard short of the first down, 115 left. On the clock, and Coach Cheatham's going to use his second timeout, and I think a good one here with the big third down coming up. Jeremy, a touchdown would be nice going into half, and we get the ball. No, uh, yep, we absolutely. do get the ball to start the second half. So while we've got a second, we want to recognize all the different ways that we're being brought to you tonight. Uh, if you're listening to us on the radio, I want to thank our friends WXFC LP 92.7 Rebel Radio. No, uh, as you mentioned, we've got a lot of folks that are. Uh, out driving or out patrolling, law enforcement, fire department, paramedics, all those folks that are out doing the hard work in this cold weather. Uh, we appreciate them listening to us there on Rebel Radio. Also, uh, fanandrebeltv.com. You can go there. It'll take you directly to the YouTube link where a lot of folks are, uh, are watching us now. You can go there. Or if you're at home with cable, ETC3 or Channel 403 in high definition. So uh, we have you covered in all uh, shapes, forms, and fashions tonight. And uh, I appreciate, Andy, the invitation to be here with you. Um, the reason that ETC is not broadcasting this with our normal crew, uh, there is going to be a spelling bee here tomorrow, the annual fifth grade spelling bee that ETC puts on. And uh, so they had to get here and do the setup early for that. That's going to be at 3 o'clock tomorrow live on ETC3. So uh, all the pre-qualifications are done. It is going to be the creme de la creme tomorrow at 3 o'clock that fifth grade spelling bee and uh, looking forward to bringing that to you. That'll be great. I, uh, uh, I, lo uh, I love the spelling bee on ESPN. That's, uh, that, that's some good stuff. That's some good drama when those kids get up there and get toward the end. Got another first down. I tell you what, running to the left uh, seems to be working. So they'll, uh, they're, they're going to bring an extra defender over there this time, though. Luke's going to drop back and uh, he's got plenty of time. He's scrambling. Do not want to throw it away. And he uh, is going to find a man. Yards. How about that? Great way to Did just get out of my trouble. First down. They stop the clock. Give him a first down. So we've got a, a an injured player. That's I Miles. I believe that is Miles Johnson. And uh, that's not good. He had he had been uh, one of the guys that had been really making an impact and. We don't have replay, but it looks like maybe somebody went a little low on him. They brought somebody over to double team that side, and uh, that's what what flushed Luke out of the pocket. And uh, with two guys on him, it looks like maybe he uh, maybe he got hurt a little bit. We'll try to keep an eye on that. Let you know what's going on. Miles had an injury uh, in the off season last year. He he uh, he got a dislocated kneecap, and it really. Uh, you know, it set him back in the baseball season. Uh, have you ever seen Miles play baseball? Miles is an excellent baseball have, player. Yeah, we, uh, we we carried all those playoff games on ETC last year. Had a had a really good time doing that. Yeah, Miles Miles is uh, is the year before he had a really really good year hitting the baseball. He was probably the best hitter we had, other than uh, Chandler. You know, Chandler, uh, excellent baseball player that went to Tennessee Westland. Yes. But uh, Miles, he got behind a little bit on the baseball, and he started coming on just about in the playoffs is about when he came back and was able to help the baseball team is when we got in the playoffs. And hopefully they'll get him up and get him moving. Yeah, he is uh, definitely 
slow down there on the field, and you always hate to see that, especially with how well he had been playing. And he was down there in some pretty obvious pain, um, and, and uh, he's continuing to be down on the field. GAC even sending somebody over there to, to look at him and – our camera guys are doing a good job there. They're going to not not leave him picture. We don't we don't want to see him in too much pain there. But um, as we mentioned, just just under a minute left in this second quarter, 28 to 14. Been a back and forth matchup. Uh, the Rebels playing really well in a game that they were sort of expected to get embarrassed in, and so uh, we're really really proud of of the effort they're putting in. And um, so hopefully we'll be able to get this game continuing to be uh, very competitive after this injury. Yeah, Miles getting up trying to trying to get a little weight on his on his knee. It's got to be a knee or an ankle. I can't really tell by watching him come off, but Miles a six five, three hundred and ten pound senior. Uh one one of uh one of the best tackles we've had in quite a while. Um so I love I love what, what's uh going on down there too uh, with with uh, them taking him down to the end of the bench the coaching staff really looking out for him taking care of him and uh, I can't tell I believe that's his head coach that uh, he had his arm wrapped around oh yeah coach Chad Chino. helped him off the field uh, Chad uh, well the clock is moving what they could let us get on the field couldn't they so a handoff in the belly timeout yep so they will Oh, it looks like, no, they're going to continue to uh, run. They, they get oh, the, first the first down, down. so the clock stops. He's going to clock it. Yep, so Luke will spike the ball, and it's going to stop it with about 30.6 seconds left. Never even started moving on that spike. So um, they, they didn't use the timeout, got the little short gain for first down. So it will be first and 10 at about the 42-yard line. With one timeout, though, Andy, you're really going to have to uh, be judicious in the way that you use these last few seconds. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to either get uh, you got one timeout. We're going to the other thing, stop a clock, a first down, uh, better yet, a touchdown. So, going to be second down after the spike loop, looking for a receiver. He's going to be flushed out. He's got a man, but oh, that's interference. That one's out of bounds. I guess they say that was uncatchable, and so that will stop the clock, though. And he appeared um, to be riding his back. I thought. Yeah, about 21.6 seconds left. And it will be third and long. So you got to be careful here. You definitely want to get this score. But what you can't have is a, a pick six or, um, you know, throwing the ball away. So have to be smart here and um, just, just find somebody open or, or take what you can get. It's four down territory, you would imagine. So don't have to get it all here. And that, that uh, you definitely got to be careful. That happened to us uh, against North Hall that kind of turned the ball game. So it looks like they're going to bring uh, a little bit of pressure. Luke. Rolls out. He throws it. He's got it. a man. Get it, Andre. Oh, oh, incomplete. Off the fingertips that time of 11. Andre Bivens, the uh, junior wide receiver, and uh, that would have been a big play. Had a uh, couple guys over there. Nice throw, a little high. Andre went up for it and just slipped through his hands. But you know what they say, if you get your hands on it, you got to come down with it. <sighs> I would say you got to punt the football here, Jeremy. What do you? What's your thought? Uh I mean, that's, that's probably what I would do, but um, in a game like this where your playoff seating is already set and you're uh, looking to pull an upset, mm -hmm. I, I, think I, may, I think I may go for it. That's, that's a good idea. And then, uh, but they are in punt formation. so And you get the ball right. the second, start the second half. We're going. Oh, they, they are going to go for it. So Nice throw. Nice. Oh, oh, oh wow. Gosh. That was pitch and catch yeah. and uh, should have been caught there. You see it in front of you and just – not able to get it done. I like that lineup in a little fake pooch formation and then throw the ball, but not able to get it going. So GAC will take over with 11 seconds and all three timeouts left. We'll see if they're content just to take a knee or if they want to take a shot as well. No, they're not going to. I can't imagine them taking a knee. They're they're not happy with this score. Being the number three team in the state and at 28-14. Yeah, they're going uh, – I'd say they're going deep. And they run a big lineman on the field. 72 forgot he was playing. <laughs> they're going to, I thought they was going to run a draw. Oh, so, they ran the wheel route. So they catch a wide open 
receiver out of the backfield, and that is um, four seconds. I believe that is that number number nine. Yeah, who's one of their leading receivers? Well, it'd be a 50-yard field goal if they want to try a field goal. That was Brooks Miller on the catch and went a little wheel route. Uh, actually, a nice play there. And they're going to call a timeout and talk about it. He was definitely wide open. I'd like to see him kick a 50-yard, see if they can make a 50-yard field goal myself. The kid's got plenty of leg. I know that. So we'll see. What they decide to do. Well, let me run through these sponsors again because without these sponsors, uh, I wouldn't get to sit here and talk to Jeremy tonight. We've got Blue Jeans Pizza, Blue Ridge Barber Shop, Blue Ridge Corn Shop, Coin Shop, I'm sorry, Gracie Barbera, yeah, I, I Brazilian they were just selling soup. corn somewhere. <laughs> Brotherhood Oil CrossFit 30513, Fan and Empty Stock and ETC Security. Fannin Regional Hospital, Kevin Painter Insurance, Kiwanis Club of Blue Ridge, Messier's Orchard, Brian Tessarero Realty, Nathan Fitz, Sison DuPont, Steve Tucker Realty, Super Clean Car Wash, Swan Drive-In, Town & Country Furniture, Taylor Trailer Drive-In, Tri-State, EMC, True Fitness Georgia, and United Community Bank, and here we go. So first down should be the last play of the half. And so the quarterback. Oh, get him right there. Yeah, they grab him, and he's scrambling, looking for somebody. Throws it towards the end zone, has a man, and it is not Holy smokes. up into the hands of the wide receiver. Wow. Oh, man. Had a little mercy. That's. Whew, that's tough to take there, isn't it? That that hurts you. And, you know, you're taught when you're playing defensive back in those situations, you just slap the ball down. You don't tip it. You don't try to catch it. You slap the ball into the ground, and that one was tipped up into the air. Receiver runs right under it and catches it for a GAC Spartan touchdown, and that is the worst possible outcome in that situation. And, Andy, not to second-guess Coach Cheatham, but the suggestion you made about punting the ball away may have been the wiser move in that situation and now uh, you're in a big hole 35 to 14 as they head to the locker room at the half and uh, that that was a big momentum shift there for uh, both of those teams so fan will have to regroup in the locker room there is uh there was a lot of yardage in the in the in the ball game i mean we we uh we had long drives in the first quarter and then in the second quarter it went wild Long plays. Yeah, both teams playing very well offensively. 35-14 to 14 is the score. That's probably not an accurate reflection of how close the game has been. Uh, certainly that play there at the end made a, uh, a big, big difference. Uh, so the band's getting ready to play. Uh, we're going to step away here and let you enjoy the halftime festivities. And we'll be back. We'll get you some scores from around the area. We'll update you on that Copper Basin playoff game right up the road. We'll get you the Gilmer Lafayette score. We'll try to let you uh, know what's going on in some big matchups throughout the state as well. But here, our score at halftime is 35-14. to 14. Uh, It has been a dominant performance by both offenses, really. GAC, of course, there with the big score at the end. But uh, we're looking forward to a great wild and woolly second half. 35-14, our halftime score. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you for watching us on FanandRebelTV.com, the YouTube stream there. Whether you're watching us or listening to us on WXFCLP 92.7 Rebel Radio or whether you're watching us on ETC3 uh, or Channel 403 in high definition, thank you for being with us. We'll be right back in just a little bit.
gentlemen, the Fannin County High School Marching Band. The Fannin Band family would like to extend a big thank you to the fine people from United Community Bank for volunteering to work our concession stand this evening. Many individuals and businesses contribute to the success of our band program. Please take a moment to look at the names of our sponsors on the video screens in the concession stand. We thank you and hope that we always represent you well. If you would also like to assist the Fannin County Band Program and become a band sponsor, please ask one of the Fannin County Band Boosters in the concession stand for details. In the concession stand, we have $3 Chick-fil-A sandwiches and $1 pizza. In Tennessee playoff action, uh, Gordonsville leads Copper Basin 14 to 6 in the third quarter. score North Hall leads Dawson 23 to 21. Raven County leads Union County at halftime 21 to 0. And Gilmer and Lafayette are tied at 14 at halftime.
And we are back, just about ready to get this second half underway. Great halftime show by the Fannin County Rebel Marching Band. That uh, first half, Andy, did not end in the way that you would want it if you're a Fannin fan, but yeah, all you can it, do is it, rebound. It got away from us. Uh, it got away from us in a hurry. I'm not sure if I got the right headset on. There is that he better? Is. There he is. There you go. Yeah, it got away from us. That, that, that play at the end of the half was a killer, especially with us getting the ball. But maybe we can, uh, maybe we can get the ball, get down here. Back to Andre. Yeah, returnable kick. This time he's looking for some room and finds it. He's going to be stacked up at about the 24, 25-yard line. A couple of scores just to share with you. Gilmer, 14. Lafayette, 14. That's your halftime score up there. Just up the road from us in Copper Basin, the Gordonsville Tigers leading Basin 14 to 6. So we'll definitely keep our eye on that. Of course, 35 to 14 here. Down the road in Canton for any Creekview Grizzly fans, 27 to 10. The Harrison Hoyas holding Creekview down so far. Creekview got a chance at the playoffs? I think I think there'll be a playoff team, but they won't have the year they had last year, obviously winning the region, going undefeated, deep run. So um, down just a little bit after their coach leaves. Well, we're missing both tackles, and Luke, that's, what, three times tonight, get some draws, them off sides? Yeah, you, you would think they would see that coming. A couple other scores for you. Heritage up 21 to 19 over Northwest. Uh, Ridgeland 28 to 14 over Southeast in some of those games that uh, folks are paying attention to in our viewing area. So we'll uh, try to keep you updated on what's going on there. Do you have a Rabin County score for us? Uh, Raven County still up 21 nothing was the last score I got. Had a boy run a little, little stand-up screen to Andre. You know, we used to run that play quite a bit, and we haven't, we haven't used that. Uh, and it, it's, it's a good play to get, get Luke in the ball game, get the kids in the ball game, get moving along. I do not, I can't tell who's playing left tackle over here. Nice play. Yeah, they run that one up the middle for a first down. The, uh, the word on Miles is uh, they think Miles has a meniscus tear. You know, I told you earlier he had uh, dislocated his kneecap uh, last year. And... Um, I don't know that his, that his uh, kneecap got dislocated, but uh, supposedly it's the same type of injury that he had before. So, the uh, who in uh, Gilmer's region? Who's winning the? Uh, who's who's ahead in that region? Yeah, the way it's, it should shake out, Ridgeland uh, is going to be the region champ uh, if they. Hold off and win tonight. Three teams are tied uh, for first place right now, but two of those teams are playing. So if uh, if Ridgeland wins, they'll win the region via tiebreakers. And then um, the uh, winner of Heritage, um, if Heritage wins, they'll be the two. That would make Pickens the three, and then Northwest Whitfield will be the four. If that flips, then uh, Northwest would be the two, Heritage the three, and Pickens the four. So, um, But right now Heritage winning, so it looks like the Pickens, if, if that holds, will be the number three seed. Is that one – Oh, he outside. Almost, yeah, he almost slipped out on that. Let's see, I can't tell. Uh, you got a number over here, 61, 51. We got a player down on the field for Fannin. Well, I can't tell who that is either. It's like another one of those. Linemen, we'll try to keep you updated on what's going on with that. Mercy, we're going down, down in a hurry. Yeah, already with a number of injuries. So, uh, so who who was the other scores that you had? Uh, Gilmer, what was Gilmer's score? They were fourteen to fourteen at the half. That a boy. You know, they, like I said, uh, Basin's had a good year. Gilmer, I think, had, had a better year, had a good year. 
Union County's had a good year. Um, so it's uh, it's interesting, and it's got to be tough. You know, Fannie and Gilmer are two schools that's always seemed to be on the edge when they reclassify. We're either the the largest school in one or the smallest school in the other, and it seems like both of us are right on the edge when it gets to that. Let's see. Let's get a number here. Is that... Uh, is that Micah? I think it is. I think that's Micah O'Neill. That would be another big time loss. Yeah, that would be a big time loss. Heck, I see Miles. Mm. That was a, a big sack there from GAC, so things going backwards. I see Miles down there looking at him. Uh, he's he's trying to get back in the ball game. He's He's kicking and moving and stretching, and hopefully he can get back in the ball game. They don't think he has an ACL uh, injury. They think they think everything's intact. In but I don't know if that's his decision to get back in the game or the trainer's or Jeremy's decision. Yeah, we'll see uh, see what they say on that. But you would assume that after how long he was down, he might be out. It's going to be a punting situation here. So, nice uh, kick. Yeah, as you mentioned, Luke is the, the top punter in the AAA classification. and uh, I can hear the coaches over here from GAC not happy he fair caught that ball. I think they wanted him to, to run that football. Yeah, but he calls for the fair catch, and it will be first down GAC already with a three-touchdown lead looking to add to that. Eight minutes, 52 seconds left in this third quarter. Well, let's we'll see if we can get back to uh, holding them on a four-minute drive. I know surely the uh, – Oh, another big-time run for GAC, continuing to have a lot of running room. He's going to be corralled about the 42-yard line, big-time run. That was a nice tackle by Andre. Held his ground, was able to take him down, but – like you said, was that 15, 20 yards? Yeah, so another 18-yard gain. Yeah, big time run there, and uh, that that has been there most of the night. Oh yeah, we're we're starting to wear down a little bit, and so another big run there, and it's going to have another well close to the first down. Looks like they'll wrap him up just a little bit short. I think Andre Andre's having a when your uh, when your free safety is leading your team in tackles like tonight, it's not a good thing. Uh, he's having a he's having a big night making a tackle, but they're usually 10, 15 yards down the field. So second and short here for GAC. Put a man in motion. They're going to run the ball again, continuing to pound it, and there is more room and maybe got away with a face mask there. But that's, that is uh, number five, Monte Bailey, that they continue to use, the senior tailback, and uh, he has had plenty of room most of the night. I tell you, we have, uh, we have a lot of players out of position tonight. We, we've, got them, we've got them switched around every, every which way. Tried to draw us off sides with that, didn't he? So that time the running back is stuck. Big time uh, meeting there. That was Mosley on the tackle. And Mosley, Mosley, um, I hate to see Mosley go. Is he a senior? He is indeed. Yeah, I hate to see him go. He is a hard nose. A couple weeks ago, or three or four weeks ago, he broke a face mask, and uh, they called me and told me to pick up a face mask for him, and when we took his helmet apart, it had three or four cracks, so we had to wind up getting him a new helmet. Yeah, I heard about that. Actually, I think uh, I remember the equipment manager, Ryan Holloway, saying that he had to borrow a helmet from one of the junior high kids for a little while. To well, yeah, it, exactly. He borrowed, uh, he borrowed uh, Case's helmet, Case Holloway. 
Yeah, K Case. Uh, Case has got a pretty good size head on him. Yeah. He uh, he and I wear the same hat size, and and you know I've I've been known to have a little bit of a, a dome myself, and so. Uh, <laughs> but hey, that worked out perfectly for Mosley. That did work out for Mosley. It was time for Case to get a new helmet anyway. That's right. So uh, quarterback being chased down from behind, but able to get rid of it. Did he pick it off? No. Bounces in the end zone, but that uh, that was short, and that'll bring up second down. That that was uh, that wasn't a very good pass there. He had a guy open in the corner, but good defense. You know, it's hard. I'd like to, uh, you know, after this ball game, I'm going to watch the film, check out 72 and 78, and see how well they, they played against us. I know it's got to drive us nuts, drive them nuts. Nice tackle. Get him on the ground. There's, a, there's a flag there in the area that would typically indicate holding, so we'll see. He's uh, Number four must be a pretty pretty strong runner because we've wrapped him up several times and just can't get him to the get him to the ground. Yeah, both Bride and Bailey are just absolute monsters there. and uh, I like this uh, for GAC. I like this second running back they're bringing in, number five. He uh, he, he looks explosive to me. He looks like a good-sized kid, too. It says 160, but he, he looks he looks a little bigger than 160 to he me. Does. So they're going to move that one back after the penalty. They'll have it about the 20-yard line. We need to stop. Clock's already down to six minutes, 21 seconds. A nice little pitch and catch there from the quarterback, Hardy. And we got a flag. Somebody, that was after the play. Somebody's done something uh, that the referee didn't like. Personal foul. Yeah, so the fan and coaches have been seeing a little extracurricular throughout the night. and I didn't, I didn't see what happened. I saw the... Uh, I saw the ref throw the flag, and he didn't look happy about it. You know, he he, uh, and, and when he made the call, he he didn't look happy about it. Apparently, somebody's uh, somebody's pushing, shoving, swinging, or did, well, not swinging, or they'd throw him out of the ball game. Yeah, a lot of times, some things too happen. You know, on those uh, on the field that you don't, you maybe hear but don't see, and you know some of those things. So. Um, this ball was almost in the end zone, and now it's all the way back after two consecutive penalties at the 41 yard, the well, inside the 41 yard line, almost at the 40. Yeah, it is. Uh, what down is it? Second and 39. So we need a big stop here. I don't know what you have in your playbook for second and 39, but <laughs> I don't, you may may just see another handoff. They've been ripping off yardage every time. Or they may try the uh, deep pass to uh, yeah, tip it around, do what you did last time. But how about that? The Rebels come up with a big sack of the quarterback, and that's going to bring up third and a mile. Great way to get after it that time by the defense. I am uh, – I apologize. I'm having difficulty reading some of these numbers. Uh and uh, I told Jeremy I kind of knew who everybody was, but we got so many people injured, I'm not sure who's playing where. So here we go, third down. Hardy is looking for a receiver. He overshoots right. him that time. That'll bring up fourth down in a punting situation for the Spartans. We've, uh, in my opinion, we've done a pretty good job controlling their quarterback. We've got after him pretty good. We've forced him out of the pocket. Or we've caused him to move up in the pocket. Yeah, it's those tailbacks that have caused the trouble. Yeah, and uh, and we just uh, we need to wrap up. Score update for you: the Gilmer Bobcats now lead twenty-one seventeen. Good for them. Twenty-one seventeen over Lafayette. You know that's a physical football game. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's a good punt. Shanked it. They're going to down it, though, at about the 15. All right. Well, we got to stop. Forced them to punt for the first time tonight. 
which is a plus. Let's see here. What do they got? Um, we don't have a running clock. They got a 21-point lead. You know, that 21-point lead is really so deceptive, too, because there have been a couple times where this was a one-possession game, and, you know, if that it literally one tip of the ball uh, made this a bigger deficit than it needed to be. We've got a lot of people listening to us through throughout the area. <coughs> Let's see what we got here. So they're going to run that toss play, which was so successful, not quite as successful without – Miles Johnson, but look at there, 78 is back on the field. I, I stand corrected. He is, uh, he's a little gimpy out there, but he is out there. and uh, Good for Miles. What a tough kid to be out there playing through that injury. He's matching up against the big kid from Stanford, the Hinton kid. And uh, they've been going at it all night. Yeah, what a cool thing to be able to tell your kids one day. Yeah. This guy who, you know, could be played in the NFL one day for all we know. I matched up with him and put him on his hind end a few times in high school. And uh, i tell you what, it was uh, a good block against him that opened that up for a pretty decent game. He's going to bring up third down. And we're still playing hard. I was noticing, noticing Seth Reese. He's out there blocking downfield. Uh, our receivers are blocking downfield. We're working hard. Big third down here. What do you think about uh, the quarterback running to the sideline and getting to play every time? I'd be wore out. I'll tell you what, if he um, if he was wearing a Fitbit, uh, Luke Holloway would be setting some kind of record that run into the sideline every time. It's great for communication, I guess, but wouldn't be my favorite thing to do either. And now you've got just five seconds left on the play clock. They do get it snapped. They hand it off and nothing doing there on third down. So we've got, uh, I was just going to tell you, I've got some friends watching, uh, fellow people from Fanning County, uh, got some Kerry Hicks up in Illinois, uh, Jeff Weaver over in North, Ca North Oconee listening to us. Of course, we got Kevin Painter, and um, one of our sidekicks usually here is Matt Queen. He usually does ball games with us, and he's up in Chattanooga working this weekend. So the, the Rebel Nation spread all over the place. That's going to be a, a punt. That one was nearly blocked. Good job by Luke to get it away. And that will go out of old. bounds at about the – oh, look, it takes a great bounce and curves back in. Go get another extra 10 yards or so on that at about the 36. Nice kick. What did we have the ball on the 15? Yeah, just about that. And so uh, a good job that time. By the way, you can listen to us a number of ways if you're out – traveling you can pick us up on rebel radio wxfc lp 92.7 if you uh, are at home and uh, you have cable access it is etc3 or channel 403 in high definition or if you are uh, somewhere and all you have is the internet of course you can watch us at fan and rebel tv.com or just go to youtube type in fan and rebel tv and you'll be able to pick us up and i know a number of you are tuning in via the various uh, outlets and we're thankful that you're spending your Friday night with us and you have been treated to a good game between the number mm. three ranked team in class 3A and your fan and rebels and GAC showing why they're number three and there is another personal foul behind uh, the play and I believe that's going to be called on the Spartans as well. I do too. I, I don't know what uh, I don't know what they're doing but they holding. Yeah so they call the holding. After the play was over the uh, player for GAC did Helped the Rebel player up. So good sportsmanship being shown, but it was a pretty blatant hold that uh, caused that flag. Yeah, I noticed they had two two guys on one. I'm not sure who our player was. So, uh, which, let's see here. That's going to bring up uh, first down 16. So, yeah, GAC has been going in reverse in this third quarter, which is kind of sneaking on by us. Three minutes left. It's gone by pretty quickly. No score getting by right. either team. Oh, man. Yeah, so tried to get the quarterback there. Couldn't get him, and that's going to be close to the first down marker, maybe a little short. He wore out the running back on that play. <laughs> nice he didn't hit the quarterback, but uh, – 
the official has that flag in his pocket and it's hanging halfway out. He may lose that thing on accident if he doesn't tuck it back in. <laughs> Maybe just there for some quick access. So second down and a couple of yards. They'll have a few chances to pick it up here. They just hand it off to the tailback, and that has been there all night. Nice He's, lick yeah, there he by was, somebody. Yeah, he was hit hard, but he does pick up the first down. They're going to move the chains. That was Mosley. Nice lick on that play. I tell you, one of the things you have to appreciate, Andy, is the way this team is, is playing, especially the physicality when you're down so many players. We talked about uh, Mason Bundy, Cahutta High, Jalen Ingram, Case and Owensby. We saw um, Micah O'Neill going out with an injury. We've seen uh, 78 Miles Johnson out with an injury. And so uh, next man up mentality, and they're still playing hard against one of the be best teams in the state. I tell you, uh, Micah is back in the ball game, which just goes to say what you – do you throw it again? Another flag. Uh, which goes to what you said is we got some tough kids. Micah is back in the ball game. Uh, Miles is back in the ball game. Both of them uh, are beat up, illegal. Ineligible receiver down yes, field. That's going to negate a huge play for GAC. The coaching staff has to be getting a little frustrated with – you know, GAC's playing well, but they're really shooting themselves in the foot in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. And they're a good football team. And, uh, uh, you know, it's not easy to travel from GAC up here to play. Uh, it's a long ride, riding a bus. Uh, and uh, now I'm not sure what, you, what situation you had in high school, but here, uh, you know, riding the bus to Gainesville and riding the bus to Lafayette and different places like that is not an easy task. No, it's it's not. And, uh, you know, school buses have come a long way, but still not the most comfortable ride. And uh, I, I have a feeling that whether GAC, you know, picks up this win or whether Fannin's able to come back, uh, that the coaches are not going to be happy with the Spartans and the way that they've performed tonight. It's almost been a, a mentality of where we're just going to come out and, um, you know, and just sort of win because we're better than this team. And uh, I, I don't believe that's the case. Fannin has come to really play tonight. We've got somebody asking us how many yards Traylon has tonight. Well, we don't have a statistician. Um, yeah, I assume y'all usually have one on ETC, don't we, you? We, uh, we do not. We try to try to keep up with it the best we can, but um, we, we don't have anybody to do that. Um, usually uh, we rely on – First down. We rely on the official. That's going to be mighty close. I believe they are going to give it to him. We, we rely on figuring out the numbers after it's over. The uh, folks at um, Georgia High School Football Daily, if you don't subscribe to that newsletter and you're a high school football fan, do yourself a favor and do that. Uh, Chip and Todd do a great job of uh, doing that. That's Georgia High School Football Daily. You can just go Google it, and uh, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and, and they're the ones that, that hand out those really good stats and help get us prepared. They're also in charge of the Georgia um, – football historians websites you can go and look at the ins and outs of a matchup between two teams going back to their first uh first game that was a great tackle by the jersey there it was that was weeks weeks got a hand on it and didn't let go also uh you can go and uh, a great place to find information is is your local newspapers uh whether you're here in fannin down in gilmer with the times courier the pickens progress um, even the chattanooga um, newspaper uh, able to, to give you some good information about the high schools in, in the area. And so uh, you can go and check those places out as well. And, and hey, Max Preps uh, has been good. That's where you go to get your rosters and standings and all that stuff. So a lot of places to find out some good information. Yeah, the News Observers has always been a big supporter of fan and athletics, regardless of what sport it is. Even from middle school on up, they do a great job. Uh, covering the area and we love to support our local newspapers that's one of those uh, industries that people s s you know they say it's dying but there's really no replacement um, for that and that's yeah. going to uh, be our final play of the third quarter and I, I really like uh, I really like our newspaper and reading our newspaper hey while we've got a chance I never got finished with our seniors let's talk about our seniors uh, we got through the football and the sports medicine, but let's talk about the band. And if I per mispronounce your name, I am sorry. But the band, we've got a lot of seniors. We've got James Art, Emma Barnstead, Thomas Barth, Barthoff. 
I'm not sure. Barthoff, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah, Isaac right. Brooks, uh, Harley Cox, uh, Amanda Fish. I'm not sure Amanda Nicole Jane Fish or if it's Jane Fish and Amanda Nicole, but uh, Seth Foster, Taylor Gibbs, Ashley Guthrie, Laura... It's Laura Guatney, and uh, Laura she, Guatney. she was the drum major. She did a great job and uh, had a cool salute. I enjoyed watching their halftime show. She did a good job. They did do a good halftime show. Yeah. Didn't our, our band does an excellent job. Uh, very, always very have. emotional, too, with the 9-11 tribute thrown in there, and so I appreciate that. Brandy Harper, Bristol Harper, Jake Hellstrom, Maddie Hyde, Sydney Loudermilk, Savannah Mac. Magianas. Well, let's get back to the ball game, and I'll get the rest of them in a second. Yeah, first down for GAC as we begin this fourth and final quarter. We went scoreless in that third quarter after a wild affair in the second, and so things have calmed down just a little bit. But there was another big collision out there, and uh, it's like we got a rebel shaking up, but he's going to get up and shake it off. I believe that's. Um, that's Andre. I believe that. Yeah, that is Bevins, and he's holding that right shoulder a little bit. Sometimes that can be a collarbone or maybe a separated shoulder, but he looks like maybe it was just a stinger. He's shaking it off. Andre's used to playing corner. He's not used to playing safety and getting uh, ten tackles in a ball game. So folks having to step up and do some things different. That's another run up the middle. What a shifty back is Monte Bailey, and there's been all kind of room, and they're still piling on to tackle him down about the four or the three. You know, and Andre's a pretty good basketball player, too. He, uh, uh, I, I don't know what the preview of our basketball team, but I know we got several ball players from Cahutta to Jalen to Andre that do play basketball. Yeah, well, speaking of basketball, it is right around the corner in the uh, ETC tip-off tournament coming up. It is going to be the Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday before Thanksgiving, as it always is, and uh, Fannin will be hosting that. This oh, really? year, yeah. So just right around the corner, we're looking forward to that. As uh, always, I'll be on that. Coach Donna Enos will be part of that. Dave Garner, Dell Land, um, Bubba Gibbs, even going to help us with that. As we see GAC go in the end zone again, and so we're uh, we're really looking forward to bringing you that. Um, just uh, man, I tell you what, football season seems like it just started, and now uh, now it's ending. But that'll be on November the twenty uh, third, twenty fifth, and twenty sixth. So. Go ahead and be tuning into those. And uh, I was talking to uh, Coach Henson, the athletic director, the other day, and he said the uh, first matchup at 3 o'clock on Saturday would be Gilmer Pickens. And so uh, we know folks will be excited about that. Fannin will play um, Hawassi Dam on that first day, and then the matchups will go from there on Monday, Tuesday. So go ahead and tune in for that. Extra point is up and good, and that's going to make it 42-14 to 14 in favor of the Spartans. Now, do you all cover any uh, wrestling? We do not, no. Uh, haven't. I haven't been able to do that. Uh, I actually went and watched some wrestling for the first time last year. That was a Gilmer Fannin matchup, and uh, I tell you what, pretty impressive for both teams. I heard them talking earlier. I heard one of the coaches talking about wrestling tomorrow, and I don't know if we've got a wrestling match or if it's wrestling season. Wrestling is uh, in the winter, right? I don't know. The only wrestling I really know about is Ric Flair and <laughs> Dusty Rhodes and those guys. So well, you know uh, Rick's a big Georgia fan. Oh, really? I didn't I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I don't know. And the, the nature boy. I, I grew up. Uh, my brother's been in the figure four leg lock a lot of times. And, uh, <laughs> the, the Mac and Dream, Dusty Rhodes, if you will. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rick, uh, Rick Flair's got a uh, stepdaughter, stepson, that runs track at Georgia. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. They put him on the field one year and uh, or last year and gave him a mic, and he, uh -oh. didn't, he didn't want to give it up. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> when you're used to performing live for, for that long, that's uh, that's interesting. But i um, tell you, this uh, GAC team has started to perform here in the second half, and uh, they, they come up with a big tackle, the defense sort of keying in on what Fannin's wanted to do. And Fannin has been rather one-dimensional tonight with all the injuries, especially at the receiver position. A couple big catches, but – also a couple of drops, but the success came, especially in that first half, with Traylon Owens be running the ball. I, and if I'm guessing, what are, what are you guessing? 100, 100 and quarter, 150 yards? Yeah, he's got to be hovering got. around that 100-yard mark. Yeah, the, the one uh, big, big run was, you know, 50-plus. And so, 
But it's been tough sledding here in the second half. Well, Miles is back in. Oh, speaking of that, he pops off another one. That's going to be a first down and more out close to the 40-yard line. So, Fannin not giving up yet. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed watching Traylon uh, run the ball the last two years. He, he is a uh, – he's a good kid. He works hard. He plays hard. I mean, he, he – uh, He's fun to watch, especially on nights like tonight. He's uh, he's he's getting after it pretty good. And Miles, like I said, Miles still in the ball game. So, yeah, he uh, if they if they if they hand out a game ball when this game's over, it needs to go to him just for his performance and for his toughness and getting back out there. Another first down here for Luke, and they hand the ball off, and there's going to be more yards. Another first down behind the senior tailback. How about that? Another good run. Now, I haven't noticed. Are they playing their second string now on defense? It, it appears so, correct? Yeah, it looks like there are some substitutes in there, but also looks like there are some athletes <laughs> oh, on my. the field. Yeah, 30, 33 doesn't look like he would be a substitute on any field, does he? Yeah, that's uh, Royce Zundu, six foot, 190-pound junior. He looks a little bit bigger than that to he me. They may be underselling all that balls on the ground and – and GAC is going to come up with it. It looks like there was a bad exchange, and then it was kicked out um, all the way about five or six yards upfield, and GAC lands on it, and that's going to be the first turnover of the game for either team. And GAC starting to celebrate a little bit over on that sideline. Well, let's get through. Let me try to get through the band the rest here. We've got Seth Mathis as a senior, Vanessa Miller, Zachary Nelson, Dylan Nuella, Stephen Setzer. Now, Stephen helps us. Uh, Stephen, has, he's in the band. He comes up here. He helps set some of this stuff up. Yeah, he was messing with our mics earlier. Yeah. You know, doing a good job. Yeah, he does a good job. Jamison Tilly, Josh Tilly, Jarrett Walker, Faith Watkins, and Kaylee Workman are the band seniors. So I, I just got um, a good uh, update here on the wrestling. It is wrestling season. You were right about that. Um, and tomorrow, Pickens is going to be hosting a big tournament. Fannin and Gilmer's middle schools will both be there. So the, the middle school wrestling uh, tomorrow, and so in the middle of wrestling season. Um, and, of course, Gilmer known for a great uh, wrestling team, Pickens and Fannin as well. And so now, Is Gilmer still as dominant as they were? I believe so. I know, I know that last year they made it all the way to uh, deep into the state championship games. And so, uh, you know, good friend of mine, Mark Pettit, the one who sort of helped established that in the 90s and 2000s. He'll actually be going into the Gilmer Sports Hall of Fame in December. Looking forward to that uh, class being inducted. Well, we've got a new quarterback playing. Yeah, GAC sort of sort of believing they've got this one in hand, and, and they probably do, and uh, letting some backups get an opportunity. Of course, GAC will be playing, and uh, no no gimme for them they're going to be playing pace academy next week and so uh, they'll be hosting them but pace academy traditionally a powerhouse this uh, entire region with uh with love it and westminster and uh and and uh, cedar grove of course a really really tough matchup and uh i tell you what it's going to be tough for all these uh that guy's all sides <laughs> yeah going to be tough for these, these all sides a good yard they don't call it though well they're going to keep throwing the ball yeah, the backup backup quarterback Damon Fleming Jr. We've seen him out there at linebacker most of the night. He's six foot one, 185 pounds, and uh, looks like he's got a pretty good arm on him too. He will be the presumable starter next year upon the graduation of Jackson Hardy as he heads away to Richmond to be a Spider. And I I will say this about GAC and Buford and some of these bigger schools that come in here, um, they're they're usually a pretty class program. Now, I realize they're throwing the ball right now, but uh, they usually don't run it up too much. Yeah, and I think GAC is going to know, Andy, they were in a fight tonight. This is not a game where you come out and just dominate. If not for that tipped ball to end the half, which I think really deflated this whole crowd and the fan and team, especially playing in 30-degree temperatures. I agree uh, with you. You know, I, I think that uh, that if not for that, we may have had a lot closer game in the second half because, you know, it was only a two-score game. Fanning was driving. You know, we may question that decision to go for it on fourth down when you could have punted, um, but uh, this was not a, a blowout in, in any 
uh, shape, form, or fashion. This was a tough ball game, and uh, Fannin really played well tonight, even though the score may not reflect that at the end of the night. They still got their senior running back in. He may be trying to get some yards, but I agree with you. You, you can't uh, – you can't make a bad call on that with with what was there, 15 seconds, 16, 16 seconds, seconds to go yeah. on fourth down, and and you're trying to win a ball game, and you know it's going to be it's going to be tough sledding the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, and you know Miles is injured, so you know why not take a shot at it? Oh, that handoff! Holy smokes! Nearly, look at that. nearly a mess, and. Uh, Oh, they man. tackle him close to the first down marker, but it looks like there was some confusion on that play, and um, the quarterback ended up having to make about a 10-yard pitch across the field, and that run is going to be good enough for a Spartan first down. 77's coming out of the ball game. He's see 77 is Bobby Kincaid. He's one of the smaller guys, uh, plays nose guard and – um, plays guard on the offensive line. He's listed at 6'2", 265. He's a cheeseburger away from 300, I believe. 265 is a, a little low for big Bobby Kincaid. And, and um, we probably pad our stats. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, see, number five still in the ball game. Yeah, Bailey, a little pushing and shoving after the play there, but no harm, no foul. That was Seth Reese in on the action over there with number 25 for – GAC. Yeah, you know, we were talking about one of our players. We were we were padding the stats, saying he was six foot and weighed this, and he's not that big. And GAC looks like uh, they take off a couple inches and a few pounds yeah. to their kids. Trying to make those guys feel good about their <laughs> their slim figures. Yeah, uh, looking down my list here, I think Kahuta Hyde listed at six one one fifty five. Yeah, that, there's no way. And Seth Reese also listed at 6'1". I, I don't think those guys are the same height just from the eye test. No. Uh -uh. But, uh, you know, you do these in the summertime at the beginning, so maybe some people going through some growth spurts, whatever it might be, regardless of, uh, of the size. Some good athletes out here for both teams. Well, apparently we were hoping some of them would grow between uh, when, we, when we measured them early and what we thought they'd be by now. Yeah, you've been watering them the whole season. <laughs> you think they should grow, sprout. Oh, um. You know, we've had a good year. We've had a good football. We've we've uh, we've played we've played really good at times. And uh, but that's you never know what's happening uh, when you get a bunch of kids together. You don't know who had a test this week. You don't know exactly what's going on. Yeah, and who's got a cold? Side who's got a on. cold? Or you know, there's all kinds of variables when you get a bunch of kids together. It's not like they're professionals, uh, but. We're going to go six and four, and uh, this is our first winning season in AAA ever. So, which is a good thing. Um, now I know AAA's changed a lot over the years, but uh, um, you know, for us to have a winning season in AAA is is a good deal. Now I'm glad to be going to AA. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, there's gonna be plenty of competition in AA though. We were kind of wow. There's a pretty Pretty bad holding call that was missed. There comes the flag a little bit late. I thought Coach Cheatham was about to absolutely lose it. And the player was just yanked down by his jersey. The flag comes in. Um, but, you know, there's going to be some really good competition in that double-A region as well. We were talking about some of that. Um, and and that, that classification, I think, really uh, got some people's attention. Uh, and there are some appeals going on. But Blessed Trinity, GAC, St. Pius, Woodward Academy, all jumping up. Buford, Calhoun, Carrollton. Um, and even some of the schools in South Georgia who maybe weren't expecting to go up, some of those schools in Savannah like uh, Island, Beach and Islands and um, Johnson and Grove, some of those schools are going to be jumping up a classification too. And some of the big uh, teams, Marist, ranked number one in Class 4A, the War Eagles are going to stay there. Love it. Pace Academy, Westminster, uh, Westminster Benedictine all staying down. Um, Bremen, Decatur, Dublin, Thomasville, and Vidalia. I really thought Bremen maybe jump up a classification, but they're all staying put. Oh, we just missed him. Yeah, a little over pursuit there, and he's going to chuck it towards the end zone. Oh, oh drops a ball he probably should have had. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, Marist is usually one team that used to play up all the time. Uh, they they were one school that I admire in, in the private schools. Um, you know, they – 
back when we didn't have a multiplier, they would, they would, uh, they would. Forrest to update you on. Um, the last time I checked, Harrison led Creekview 33 to 10. The score is now Creekview 47, Harrison 33. That's 37 unanswered from the Grizzlies. And we see an onside kick. Oh, he gets away from it. And Oh, you see how oh, it tosses it backwards, but you can't do that once the ball is down. It's down, and I don't know what that was about. I think, I think they were covered, so. Yeah, GAC came up with it, and then for some reason, look where the ball is, is and where he's spot. Come here. Interesting. Come interesting, right interesting. Here. That is interesting. That is interesting. Uh, Gilmer with a, a slim 28-23 lead you, over in Walker County against Lafayette. We'll try to keep you updated oh, on that one as well. Anybody giving you uh, scores from there, you get it off. Uh, this is all using the score stream app. So if you uh, are one of those people that uh, likes to keep up with what's going on, score stream pretty accurate. Somebody here, I'm not sure who it is, is keeping us updated every time there's a score, we get an update. Uh, Ridgeland is capping off uh, another good season with a 42 28 lead over Southeast Heritage, still up on Northwest, 24 to 19. So keep up with Whitfield County. White County trails. Um, Blessed Trinity 35 to 6. That was playing out about like we thought it would. It's going to be a, a knee here. Last score I got on, uh, I hate to keep bringing this up, but Rice Cole. Now, great effort tonight. Uh, Fanning County Rebels. Is that it? That's just like the first time. Congratulations to the GAC. Yeah, yeah. They take the victory 42-21. The Rebels will advance to the state playoffs next week. They will play Cedar Grove a time if they is to be announced. They are pretty explosive. I think their quarterback's been out for some, for some games as well. But um, here, that's going to do it for us. And a score that ends up 42 to 21. It looks like we have a video restored. And, uh, we, uh, we're glad that uh, some of you have stuck with us. Once again, you can hear us. WXFC LP 92.7 Rebel Radio, ETC 3, 4, 3, and high definition and right here. We'll have to take it. And RebelTV.com. You can look at the YouTube link there. Um, of course, right. the travel down, down next week, that game won't be uh, televised on ETC. I'm not sure if the other TV is going to have it on uh, uh, maybe a radio. Nah, it, I'm not sure. Uh, we're we're going to wait and see whether it's a Friday night. I'm hoping it's Friday night because the next week I'd like to go see it beat up on all. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate, uh, Jeremy, you helping us tonight. Oh, man, I've, I've had a great time, and I always enjoy coming to Fan and some close uh, friends and what I consider to be family that are here, and I've gotten today a lot of the folks. Great administration. One of the things I really love about Fan and Andy, and I know this is just um, us sort of uh, talking, but um, you've got Chad Cheatham, who's a hometown boy, homegrown, uh, comes back after a really good career uh, you know, with uh, coaching under So he comes back here and he's built this program uh, up. It's always been a, a good team that competed, but now their second um, season here, he's going to be heading to the playoffs for the second year in a row, a winning season in Triple A. Um, and uh, the team has, has done really well. He's building the team he's next year, senior quarterback coming back in Luke Holloway and some, some younger athletes that are looking to step up. And so uh, this team can be the team. Traylon Owens beat uh, just all kinds of. Uh, Toughness there. He was running all over the place. Um, he had a couple of players that were injured uh, coming back. And if not for a couple of momentum swings right before the half, this could have been a lot closer ball game than it was. Uh, 42 to 21, maybe not um, reflective of, of how well Fannin played tonight. But I know that Coach Cheatham and his staff will go in the locker room and uh, he'll pat those boys on the back and tell them. It's I like a good it here. Job that whole time. Fault ball game and. Uh, you know, congratulations to us uh, for having a winning record this year. And moving on to the playoffs, you never know what what's going to happen. It doesn't look good to draw the number one team again, but you never know. So that's right. So that's going to do it for us here tonight. We're going to go and try to brave the cold and get home. Thank you for being with us, whether you were listening to us on WXFC LP 92.7, whether you watched us on ETC 3 and 403 or whether you were tuning in on Fan and Rebel TV. Thank you for being with us on this Friday night. Thank you to uh, to our crew who has um, been so good to us, got us back on the air when we lost our 
feed and uh, really took care of us. And uh, on behalf of Andy Arp, I'm Jeremy Green. Thank you for being part of Fan and Rebel Football on this Friday.